trop dans la salle. Euh, Parle-moi, Jean-Pierre, s'il te plaît. Parle-moi. Oui, oui, je t'écoute. Oui, parce que... Attends, ça bouge pas. Un, deux, tu m'entends Allô. Oui, parfait. Ok, merci. Réglage, il est redevenu un peu sourd sur le mien. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, voilà, parfait, merci. Ok. Bonjour, bonjour à toutes et à tous, bienvenue. I uh, just wanted to wish a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for attending here this uh, press conference for the Monaco Hercules 2021. On est en présence de, du directeur du, du meeting, M. Jean-Pierre Chebel, qui, avec toute son équipe, vous a encore concocté un, un superbe plateau. On va le laisser s'exprimer justement sur, sur ce plateau en français et on traduira tout cela en anglais. Feel free to uh, have your questions ready if you, if you need for each of our uh, guests here will be with us uh, in French or in English. We will translate and there will be one conference. Merci Jean-Pierre, merci et bienvenue dans ton stade. Merci. D'Hercules EBS, je vous souhaite la bienvenue ici à Monaco à l'occasion de notre 35e édition, 35e édition de notre meeting Hercules et sixième étape de la Wanda Diamond League. Deux... Je te laisse Marc. Just wanted to wish you a warm welcome here for this 35th uh, Monaco Hercules meeting and the sixth uh, uh, stage of the uh, Wanda Diamond League 2021. Oui, demain nous sommes heureux de pouvoir vous présenter un plateau d'athlètes de grande qualité avec entre autres 10 champions du monde, 11 meilleurs performeurs mondiaux de l'année et 6 détendeurs de records du monde. So we have uh, 10 world champions here uh, for this meeting, 11 who have the world best this year, and six uh, uh, Détenteurs de record. world record holders, Order. sorry, sorry. Le public a répondu présent dans les limites sanitaires imposées anti-Covid qui sont de 8000 spectateurs. So the, the, the attempt, the, uh, the, the crowd will be here within uh, a number of uh, 8,000 spectators. This is the uh, COVID uh, uh, Limit. information and limits that we have. La météo est bonne. Le stade Louis II, comme vous le voyez, est bientôt prêt. Et nous sommes contents avec le service de presse de répondre au maximum à vos attentes, bien sûr, dans la limite des mesures sanitaires en vigueur. And uh, the stadium is ready, as you, you can see, first uh, press conference outside uh, in the stadium. And uh, of course, we will be uh, uh, ready for all your expectation in the limit of these uh, anti-COVID uh, informations. Mais je sais que vous êtes impatient d'écouter les athlètes qui sont prévus de venir. Aussi, je, sans attendre, je vais leur laisser la place. En vous remerciant pour votre attention, en vous souhaitant en tout cas de passer une très bonne journée avec nous. Et une très bonne soirée demain à l'occasion de notre meeting. Merci beaucoup. And without being too long, uh, just uh, because you're here for the athletes also, I uh, will leave the, the, the place and uh, we wish you a wonderful meeting uh, tomorrow evening. Voilà, merci. If uh, someone have, have a question for Jean-Pierre, is there any question? No? So we can, we can start uh, with, uh, with a guest that we will have. Thank you. Merci Jean-Pierre. Merci. Merci Justine. <laughs> Cleaning up. <laughs> she's she's great. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, our first guest. 
Well, our first guest is uh, since the 1st of July, the new world record holder uh, of the 400 hurdles, uh, le nouveau détenteur du record du monde du 400 mètres ouais, depuis le 1er juillet. C'était au Bislet Games à Oslo. Deux fois champion du monde, two times world champion in London and uh, in Doha. Also, uh, you five or five, and uh, it was a. Uh, world champion at the octathlon uh, for the youth a long time, some times ago. He's here with us. Just welcome Karsten Vorholm from Norway. He heard it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you. Karsten, welcome again in Monaco. I know you know the place and uh, we're lucky, we lucky to have you and uh, we're happy to have you back here in Mo Monte Carlo. Just, I want to know how you feel after that Wonderful, wonderful race, uh, the 1st of July, with a new world record since 1992, and Kevin Young, who got this world record, you were chasing for some times. You must be pretty happy with that. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I think it was just a huge relief, because <laughs> we've been talking about this record for two, three years now, and... Uh, you know, it's been it's been a long journey, and uh, it's been a lot of hard work trying to get it. And for me, it was you know now with many guys running very good in the 4 meter hurdles, it was very important to me that I was the first to get it from Kevin Young. And uh, and when I managed to do that, of course, you get relieved, but you also get get very happy and and sentimental because you know there's a lot there's a lot behind doing a record like that. It's it's a very difficult time to run, and, uh, and I'm very happy that that I can be a world record holder now. Effectivement, un grand soulagement parce qu'on en parle de ce record depuis un moment, on le, on le courait après et c'est un moment extrêmement particulier que de l'avoir battu avec beaucoup d'émotion et quelque chose qui justement m'a aussi rendu particulièrement respectueux de, de, de ce qu'il avait fait. Et donc je trouve que ce, ce record a amené, a amené énormément de choses parce que encore une fois, la, la chasse a, a été longue. Just wanted to know... Uh, what can you expect from uh, this meeting here? You know that place pretty well. Uh, it's another stage, another step for, to go to, to the Olympic Games because the main goal this year is to be Olympic champion. This is a title you don't have yet. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, we are, we are working very hard to be able to be in the best position that we can to, to be able to, to get a medal in the Olympics. And, um, and right now I feel... I waited a long time to start my season. Bislet was was my first 40 meter hurdles, and uh, and now I feel like it's great having uh, this competition uh, here um, in Monaco. Uh, with it is actually it's perfect difference in time between Bislet and Monaco, and uh, and this is a very good track, a very fast track. Uh, I did some training here yesterday, and it felt really good. So so I think this is going to be a very nice way to to get ready for Tokyo. Oui, effectivement, on est dans une bonne position, c'est vrai, pour aller chercher une, une bonne médaille à, à Tokyo. Mais encore une fois, euh, j'ai commencé ma saison assez tard. Et donc, le bislet était mon premier 400 mètres haies. Donc, euh, c'est parfait parce que le timing est excellent entre le bislet et puis euh, et puis Monaco. La piste ici est, est très rapide, on le sait, c'est un super meeting. Je me suis entraîné dessus et euh, déjà, je, ça répond bien. Donc, il y a, oui, bien entendu, euh, quelque chose dans, la, dans, dans ma tête en, 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 route, en route pour Tokyo. We're saying that... Uh, it was almost the perfect race, that, but I'm sure you can do also uh, more, more improvement from the, the Bislet race. Uh, very fast at the 200, at the, f at the fifth hurdle, uh, 13 all, t all the time, without slow prove uh, to, 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 to be faster. Um, I think I think there's actually a lot you can improve to to be faster. Um, but uh, but right now I'm I'm just very happy with the race I had in Bislet. But I think the difference between the speed that you have in the start of a 400 meter run and the speed you have at the end it's it's a huge difference. So I think there's always a lot to to gain in the last hundred meters. And uh, in, in, you mean in the balance in between the start and the, the yes, finish. because it's really slow at the end. Even though even though the time is good, it's always slow at the end, and uh, and it's and it's a painful race to to go through it. But uh, I think. I think you can always improve, and uh, and I hope that I will never get my perfect race. But we are always going to work to get as close to zero as possible. 
Oui, non, effectivement. Vous savez, on peut toujours, je pense qu'il y a toujours des choses à, à améliorer. Euh, il y a bien entendu une grosse différence entre le départ et puis l'arrivée. On est toujours beaucoup plus lent à l'arrivée qu'au départ. Et donc, ce sont des choses sur lesquelles on peut travailler. La question de relance, justement, est, est trouver le bon équilibre entre les deux. Oui, bien entendu, c'est quelque chose sur lequel on travaille. J'espère que je n'ai pas fait la course parfaite et j'espère que elle euh, je ne ferai pas la course parfaite encore et qu'on peut toujours améliorer les choses. Thank you very much. I'm glad to, to have you back here. We will let uh, nice our good. guest, also our journalist, to, uh, to ask you a few questions if, uh, if they need. Si vous voulez quelques questions. Et donc, uh, voilà, on peut prendre une première, Nicolas. Just name yourself, please, uh, and uh, the media you're presenting, and, uh, and ask your question. Thank you. Uh, le micro en salle. Il est, il est ouvert. Alors, il faut l'ouvrir. Il faut l'ouvrir sur, sur le milieu. Voilà. Merci. Vous m'entendez, oui. oui. Nicolas Herbelot, l'équipe. Carsten, can you tell us why you started so late in the season? Was it the, the plan or was it because of an injury at the beginning or in the season? I don't know. And how many races you still should race before the Olympics if there are more to come? Um, so this, this will be my last race before the Olympics because we are going to Tokyo already 17th of July. Uh, because we're going to have a pre-camp there to get you know used to the time zones and the weather and everything. Um, but the reason I started late was that I didn't have um, the f the first 40 meter hurdles was in Doha late May, so I thought that was that was a bit too early. And then there was no Diamond League 400 meter hurdles races through all of June, so uh, I did a race 300 meter hurdles in in Bislet, which which was a nice start for me just to get it going and. Uh, And I don't think there is a reason why you should have that many races as long as you are prepared and ready to, to go hard from the first one. And, and we train in a special way, so I feel like I train with very high quality so that I'm always... Oui, non, on a prévu de partir le, le 17 euh, juillet à, à, à Tokyo pour de conditions météorologiques également. Et encore une fois, si j'ai si commencé ma saison euh, tard, c'est parce que euh, le, le 400 mètres haies, euh, le, le plus important en Diamond League était au mois de mai, c'était un peu trop tôt et ensuite il n'y a pas eu d'épreuve importante justement en Diamond League pour, pour moi. Mais encore une fois, ce n'est pas un, un énorme problème d'avoir si peu de, de courses puisqu'on s'entraîne à, à haute intensité, à très grande qualité d'entraînement et donc c'est ce qui me permet tout de suite de, de rentrer très rapidement dans les, dans les compétitions. One more question? Yes, please. Hi, I'm uh, Hanna from NRK. Uh, could you please uh, describe how the last week has been for you? Oh, it's been, it's been a very special week, of course. Um, and it's extra special because, you know, the world record is one thing, but to be able to do it home in Oslo, the, the track where I train every day, it's, it's very special. And also, um, first time having uh, people back in the stadium in Norway it was special to to be able to do that in front of family friends and uh, and Norwegian fans so I've just been very happy but at the same time I've been trying to you know cool down and, and be able to get some energy back and and to be able to run faster in Monaco as well oui, effectivement, c'était un, un moment particulier de le faire, notamment chez moi, à Oslo, euh, sur une piste où je m'entraîne devant la famille, devant les amis. Euh, C'est un, un moment forcément euh, très, très fort d'avoir pu, pu réussir ça. Et donc, euh, de revenir ici avec euh, ce, ce record du monde, euh, j'attends bien entendu beaucoup de ce, ce meeting euh, dans, euh, euh, demain. Yes. And the uh, expectations isn't exactly smaller this week. Uh, how uh, fast do you think it's possible to run here So the good thing now, I don't have to chase world record anymore. I can only chase a personal best. So that, that is a good <laughs> thing. And, uh, <laughs> It will be good. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, you know, expectations being high is probably just the result of, of me doing a good job and, and to be able to perform at a high level. So I can live with that. But um, the only thing I can do is just to go out hard and try to do the best race that I can every time. And, and of course, I want to try that again. But you never have guarantees, and that's why... It's exciting to watch and why people should be here on Friday and see what happens. Oui, effectivement, euh, ce qui est bien maintenant, c'est que euh, avec le record du monde, j'ai plus besoin que plus d'aller le chercher, mais d'aller me chercher un record personnel. Donc euh, ça, ça, ça c'est la, la nouvelle, la nouveauté pour moi. Et encore une fois, le, le, tout ce qui a été fait à l'entraînement permet d'être d'être très bien. Donc euh, on essaye euh, d'améliorer à chaque fois. Et je vous le dis aujourd'hui, ça serait pas mal d'être là pour pour la course de vendredi, parce que que ce soit les gens qui sont dans le stade ou ceux qui vont regarder à la télévision, il y aura quelque chose à regarder. Yes, oui. 
une autre question là-bas et après Nicolas. Uh, hello, Patrick Schmidt, uh, Swiss Television. Um, did you have a contact with Kevin Young last week? Um, and the second question is, uh, are you a bit sad that Ray Benjamin isn't here? Yes, yeah, so first of all, uh, actually, I, um, I FaceTime with Kevin Young uh, during uh, Norwegian television right after the race. And uh, no, he's, he actually seemed very happy that, that I was able to take it. But uh, he actually, he, he probably knew it was on television, so he had to smile. But, you know, it's, it's, it's all respect, <laughs> it's all respect to, to Kevin. And, uh, and for a world record to be standing for 29 years, it's, it's very special. And, uh, and for me to be able to take it as well is, is very special. So I spoken to him and, um, and, he was, and he was very happy for it. Um, and when it comes to, to Rai, I was actually hoping that, that, we, could, that we could race uh, tomorrow because I really been looking forward to it. It's, it's been since Doha when we, when we raced the last time. So I was looking forward to it, but yeah, we just got away to Tokyo. It's going to be even more exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to race. Oui, concernant Kevin Young, juste après le meeting, on a, eu un, on a fait un, un FaceTime avec, euh, avec euh, la télévision norvégienne, il l'avait invité, et donc il souriait, alors c'est peut-être que c'était la télévision, mais euh, et je pense qu'il était, oui, était assez content, 29 ans, un record, moi j'ai beaucoup de respect pour, pour lui par rapport à ça, et je crois que lui aussi, donc euh, ça a été un, un moment assez particulier, c'était assez sympa de pouvoir lui parler. Et puis, concernant Ray Benjamin, moi j'aurais aimé qu'il soit, qu soit là, j'attendais beaucoup de cette course, mais bon, ça sera, ça sera forcément à, à Tokyo, là. Une autre question Deux questions devant uh, Yes, we, uh, wait for the mic. Mike is coming, Sorry. please. Thank you. And Nicolas, après. <laughs> um, Carsten, Nicole Jeffrey from World Athletics. Um, you mentioned recovering your energy before. Um, when you set a world record, is the recovery more physical or mental? Um, because I think there's probably a mental letdown after you achieve something you've been chasing for so long. Yes, it's hard to tell because... I think it's um, um, how can I say? I've heard that when 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 people are pregnant and they get the baby, they get depressed afterwards. Yes. I've heard about baby those blues. things, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and this could probably be be somewhere similar because it's like you actually you've been waiting for this a long time, then it happens, and it's it's sort of like you get really tired afterwards, and uh, and uh, of course I th I think it's I think it's mental but but also you you can feel it physical but you know i've been able to to land pretty well and and it's it's a part of my job to be able to do good races after doing uh doing another race so i feel i feel like i'm ready to go again and and i'm gonna try and the worst thing that happens is that i get tired very early but uh i, I don't i don't fear it i think i think we shouldn't fear it i think we should always try to improve ourselves and uh and that's my focus also Also tomorrow, and I, and I think it's going to be an exciting race. Oui, non, si je comparais effectivement le, le retour, oui, bien sûr, il y a le côté mental. Alors, je vais comparer ça à une naissance, la naissance, donc qui fait que les femmes, on, on le dit euh, parfois, ont le baby blues, et c'est pas quelque chose de, 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 de simple. C'est un sentiment euh, qu'on peut qu'on peut avoir après un, un tel un achèvement, un tel, une telle consécration pour moi. Mais je crois que j'ai assez récupéré, j'ai réussi à, 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 bien, à bien récupérer de tout ça, à la fois physiquement et, et mentalement, et encore une fois euh, j'attends quelque chose de, de la suite c'est on est, on est, on, est mon travail, ça fait partie de mon travail donc je suis obligé de, de me refocaliser justement là-dessus encore une fois, je vous le dis, on peut attendre quelque chose de la course de demain Nicolas Carsten, about running or not against Rai uh, what does it change truly during a race I mean, I guess you try not to think about your opponents and to stay focused on, on your own lane, but uh, do you succeed in it? Or does, does it make it easier to break a world record not to have such an opponent and so on? Yeah, I think, I think opponents are, are very important because if I was winning with whatever, 10, 15 meters, there wouldn't be anything pushing me, you know? And, and for me, knowing that I have Uh, people running really fast like like Ray Benjamin um, I know that I have to be on my best or probably even better than I was last year to be able to win and and of course those things motivate you to to give a little extra and to and to do everything in your power when you go to training every day be focused and do and do the job so so I think your opponents is actually what helps you to push you towards being being the best level that you can be 
Oui, on va, on va toujours faire la, la meilleure course, quoi qu'il arrive, qui, quoi que ce soit, qui, qui que ce soit qui soit dans la, la course. Mais euh, c'est vrai qu'on s'entraîne euh, vraiment pour ce, ce genre de course aussi. Les détails sont importants. Et bien entendu, les opposants, lorsqu'ils sont aussi performants que Ray Benjamin, eh bien, vous amènent à vous à être encore plus performants. Et donc, forcément, c'est quelque chose d'assez intéressant dans ce, dans ce genre de duel. Il ressort toujours quelque chose. Une autre question One more question. Do you have questions uh, no, from the... Okay. Yes, no, no more questions. Uh, so thank you very much, Carsten. Thank you, you the for best. having me. It's, uh, it's, ha it's a very a good, a great honor to have you back here after that world record, back again in Monaco. You know the place. I know the place is great, and I'm really looking forward to race here Friday. Et j'attends beaucoup de cette course de vendredi. Merci, good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Je voulais qu'on soit à l'heure pour ceux qui ont le programme. On y va. Voilà, our next guest, thank you for waiting, our next guest is here. Elle est détentrice du record du monde en salle, World Indoor Record Holder, 1543 uh, since uh, Madrid in uh, 2020. 
two times world champion in uh, London and in Doha, and two times world indoor champion in Portland and in Birmingham, 2016-2018. And uh, since uh, a few days, I mean, she also holds uh, a wonderful uh, performance uh, outdoors, the same as the world indoor record, 15:43. She's on, on the hard meeting, and uh, she was made named the athlete of the year 2020 by the World Athletics and uh, Silver Olympic Games medalist at uh, Rio. She is here with us. We'll do the conference in Spanish. Yulimer Rojas, Venezuela. Hola. <laughs> Bienvenido. <laughs> ¿Qué tal? Toma, toma el micrófono, por favor. Este. Muy bien. Sí, 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 sí. Dejar, de, dejar el mask. Yo, 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 yo tomo el mask para, para ti, para, para nosotros. ¿Cómo estás después de, de esta gran performance? 15 metros, 40, 43 metros. Uh, es el mismo, la misma performance que, que el récord mundo de indoor que tú tienes también, que tú, que tú habes también. ¿Cómo, cómo te sientes uh, con esta performance ahora? ahora? ¿Cómo te sientes ¿Cómo te sientes después de haber hecho esta performance equivalente de tu world indoor record? Bueno, eh, en realidad estamos muy bien, estamos muy, muy contentos de, de empezar una temporada de gran forma. Eh, muy contento por, porque estamos en la mejor forma de mi vida y se acercan los Juegos Olímpicos, así que eso me motiva muchísimo más aún. Y, y bueno, feliz de estar aquí eh, en Mónaco nuevamente y, y tratando de, de dar lo mejor de mí y, y de disfrutar más que todo. I was very happy to start a, a new season with uh, this performance uh, again. I mean, uh, I'm like in the best shape of my, my life uh, so far. So I'm very happy to be back here another time in, uh, in Monaco. And I will try to, to make something, something special. ¿Qué puedes uh, expectar de, de este meeting aquí en, en, en Monte Carlo? ¿Hay un objetivo preciso o, o es una, una etapa para, para ir a, la, a los Olímpicos? Bueno, sí es verdad que, que el estar presente aquí eh, y este meeting de Monte Carlo eh, atrae mucho y, y es fantástico. A, así que cada vez que vengo trato de disfrutar al máximo, de dar lo mejor de mí, de tratar de estar al 100% para, para poder sacar grandes registros. Y, y bueno, nada, disfrutar, eh, hacer lo mejor posible de, eh, lo que pueda. Y, y bueno, y solo confiar en el trabajo que estamos haciendo y seguir y, eh, enfocados en, en demostrar que este año puede pasar cosas increíbles. Alors, c'est quelque chose toujours de, de particulier de venir ici à, à Monaco, bien entendu, et bien en, j'ai envie que de, donner à, euh, de me donner à 100%. J'ai une, une attente ici lorsque je viens à ce meeting qui est, qui est un peu décuplée, mais j'ai envie aussi de pouvoir faire ce que j'ai l'habitude de faire et je, démontrer quelque chose d'incroyable, peut-être cette année. Voilà, ce que je voudrais, c'est un petit peu ce que je... Qu est, est -ce la cosa incroyable. Había uh, hace una, una salta más que el récord del de mundo, pero estaba en la plasticina de, de 5 centímetros, más, más o menos. Huh? She, she did a great performance with a... She was biting the, the plasticine for 5 centímetros and it was over, over the uh, world record of Vanessa Kravitz. Bueno, eh, este año han salido las cosas eh, de buena manera, pero sí es verdad que ha habido varios nulos que han sido muy, muy largos. Y, y bueno, eso en realidad me, me da mucha confianza en saber que las cosas están, están allí, que, que las marcas y los registros pueden salir. Pero bueno, que hay que esperar el momento perfecto para que para que todo se planifique y, y salga eh, lo que quere, estamos buscando. Well, effectivamente, I, I had this this wonderful jump. I was a no, a no jump, of course, but uh, I know that I can make it. And it, th knowing this gives me a lot of confidence. And uh, it, if it's if it can happen again, I'm sure it will. So uh, I'm uh, doing the the right things, and uh, we'll see we'll see what what can, what can go on. But uh, Again, it gives me a lot of confidence. Okay, si tú quieres, vamos a... a, a preguntas de, la, de los periodistas. 
et name yourself un micro devant. Et ici, merci pour la première question. Hola, Stéphane del diario L'Equipe. Hablamos el otro día. ¿Tienes el sentimiento que desde 12 o 13 años se habla mucho más de los saltos uh, con Zango, con usted, con Arison en los Estados Unidos, que hay un movimiento bastante interesante sobre los saltos? Hay uh, muchas cosas. Uh, there were a lot of things expecting from, uh, from uh, expectations from a lot of, uh, like uh, Zango, like you, uh, other jumpers, uh, to have great performances. Uh. Bueno, sí, es verdad que... Eh en estos próximos años que han, que han ido pasando el, el área del salto salto largo, salto triple el salto alto eh, salto con pértiga eh, ha habido como una camada de atletas que, que han salido a, a reclamar podios a, a dar buenos registros y, y para mí de verdad que es fascinante que el atletismo eh, más que todo el área del salto eh, esté por encima y está eh, dando de qué hablar. Eh, nosotros estamos aquí para demostrar que, que podemos hacer grandes cosas y, y bueno, y sé que mis compañeros tratan de dar lo mejor de sí siempre. Yes, there is a, of course, like a, a new wave coming uh, in different uh, jumps, in uh, high jump, in the long jump, in pole vault, also uh, a lot of great champions coming. Try to uh, have uh, the, be the best podium they can, make the, the best performances they can, of, of course, and uh, uh, this gives me also uh, a lot of uh, uh, power to knowing this, that uh, we're, we're in a new generation coming and uh, doing, doing something, uh, something great for uh, our sport. Une autre, une autre question? Laura? Hola, Yuli. ¿Cómo Hola. estás? Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> Uh, ¿Cuándo ganaste el título de mejor atleta del año, del año, eh, el año pasado? Eh, dijiste que tu objetivo y que pensaba que era algo que podías uh, realizar era saltar 16 metros, ser la primera mujer a saltar 16 metros. Y yo estuve hablando con alguien que se llama Jonathan Edwards uh -huh. y me dijo que fácil, <risa> Yuli lo puede hacer fácil. Eh, es, es, ¿Es una meta tuya este año o los años que viene? ¿Sigue siendo esta una meta tuya? Bueno, uh, it was something special when you got the, the, the title of the year uh, 2020 last year. Uh, you said that one, one of your, your dream was to, to jump over 16 meters and being the first lady to do 16 meters. And you've been talking, to, uh, we've been talking to Jonathan Edwards, Laura talked to Jonathan Edwards, and Jonathan Edwards said, easy, she can make it easy. So is this some, something that uh, you can, uh, you, you have in mind, and uh, that helps also you to, uh, to perform? Wow. Eh, yo, en realidad, <laughs> en realidad, el trabajo que estamos haciendo y que venimos haciendo, eh, nos hace pensar en grande yo soy una atleta que cada vez que es, está en la pista eh, trata de demostrar que, que los sueños se pueden hacer realidad y, y que la, los objetivos que tenemos los podemos cumplir eh, si hacemos el trabajo preciso así que eh, los 16 metros se dice bastante difícil pero sé que lo tenemos allí presente eh, vamos paso por paso así que el trabajo es Tratar de ir poco a poco, cumplir lo que queremos y, y mantener ese enfoque en los 16 metros que sé que, que soy un atleta que, que lo puede lograr. Es algo, por supuesto, escuchar esto es genial, pero soy un atleta que está haciendo lo mejor que puede all the time, trying to be very precise, trying to repeat things she's been learning and training and uh, and uh, This is, of course, something in mind for 16 meters, but there will be step, there will be stages. So they will be, I'm doing it step by step and uh, precisely trying to improve all the time. This is the, the most important thing. And then uh, we, we hope that uh, I'm on a, the right way and uh, hope to get, to get it. But uh, so far, trying to do step by step. One more question. Yes, over there. Si je suis pas assez précis en espagnol, Laura, t'hésite pas. Donc, euh, je lui ai dit qu'on était. Je suis Hannah de Norwegian TV. Nous yes. avons uh, parlé avec Brittany Rees, la longue jumper, qui n'est pas en Diamond League cette année parce que les règles de final trois. Quelle est votre take sur les final trois et vous comprenez pourquoi elle ne va pas compétition dans la Diamond League Es una Britney Rees uh, uh, que, que no puede que no puede competir en uh, Diamond League. En les trois. 
because of the final three. Ah, really because of the final, final three. three. Oh, lo, lo, oui. lo, lo, Laura. Dis-moi, dis-moi. Si. Bethany Reese en yeah, longitud, sí. salto no, de longitud. No quiere saltar en Diamond League por culpa de esta regla de los últimos tres saltos. Ah. Quiere saber lo que tú piensas de esta regla, que en los últimos tres saltos se vuelve a empezar de cero. Bueno, eh, es, es un tema bastante complicado para, para nosotros los atletas que tratamos de demostrar de, de, y dar lo mejor de sí en, en cualquier competición y más todavía aquí en, en las paradas de la Diamond Lee. Entiendo a Britney Reese eh, que su postura y, y en realidad nosotros estamos un poco contrariados porque eh, esto viene pasando hace ya un par de años que eh, tratan de cambiar eh, eh, el tema de los saltos eh, eh, de los intentos y para nosotros no, no, no sería mejor eh, mantener eh, los seis saltos y, y no hacer cinco saltos y, y luego esperar eh, en el último intento que es el válido así que para para mí eh, es una regla bastante bastante di distinta y, y que nos, no, nos, nos hace ver que, que, que lo que están haciendo no, no está bien, ¿sabes? Así que pienso que en los próximos años espero que, que todo pueda ir avanzando y, y que se pueda volver a los seis saltos. I, I respect her position. I mean, I heard that she what she's saying, but uh, this is something we we also try to change. We 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 make it like if we make uh, these uh, five jumps, and then uh, for this reason we have to do something uh, different. This is not something I like. Uh, this is not something I, I feel I feel comfortable with it. But uh, uh, so far we have to adapt, and uh, we try to change it. We try. We we would love to to change it since last mm -hmm. year, and we'd love to 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 come back to uh, to a, a normal uh, uh, finish of the of the competition. Une autre une autre question. Samuel Prosimo, Radio Emotion. Hola, Yolimar. Hola. Eh, en Río eh, eras detrás de la intocable Ibarguen. Ahora eres la favorita. Sientes la presión eh, la tuya y también eh, la de tu país, el Venezuela. Eh, hay mucha espera, ¿no? There is a lot of expectation in uh, in uh, in Venezuela, of course. Do you, st do you feel the pressure? And there is, of course, Ibargen, who was uh, was uh, uh, the leader and the the, the winner in uh, in Rio, uh, also uh, uh, among this. Even if you're the favorite for Tokyo. Bueno, eh, nosotros eh, sí si es verdad que tenemos una responsabilidad bastante grande en, en seguir trabajando y en cumplir con los objetivos planeados durante el año y más de cara a, a Tokio. Eh, y estoy muy tranquila, estoy muy muy feliz de, de que el año está pasando de la mejor forma, eh, tranquila de que las marcas están saliendo y, y el esfuerzo y el, el sacrificio que hemos hecho eh, se está viendo reflejado en, en cada una de mis actuaciones. Eh, espero dar lo mejor de mí en lo que queda del año, espero dar lo mejor de mí aquí en Mónaco y, y ir a Tokio eh, más firme aún de conquistar eh, eh, ese, ese oro olímpico y, y nada, y tratar de seguir dando la alegría a Venezuela que, que confía en mí, que se sabe que, que hay una aspiración bastante grande. I just uh, I want to, 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 to tell you that uh, this is of course something that we, we, uh, we feel it, where we, we are uh, going to, uh, to, to Tokyo in, that, in this expectation, of course, but uh, there is a, a, a great uh, feeling knowing that the, the, the The, the the season is started started pretty well with great performances and that makes me uh, p gives me a lot of confidence for uh, for Tokyo knowing this uh, of course there is a lot of expectation at home but I feel really uh, in good shape and I'm, I'm feeling good I'm not putting pressure on myself being here in Monaco it's one step to go to to Tokyo and I want to uh, also uh, demonstrate that I feel I feel good again here and again this season And this is how I can uh, handle uh, this pressure without uh, being stressed. Une autre, uh, une autre question? One more question? Yes, in front, please. <laughs> Hi, Yilma. Um, 
When you are out in a competition, is there something that tells you that you're going to jump big that day? Is there is it speed on the runway? Is it rhythm? Is there something that says today is going to be a good day in competition for you, an indicator? Que puede uh, darte información que, que tú es en la, la mejor forma uh, antes, antes, un, uh, antes un, una competencia como aquí en Monte Carlo es la velocidad es uh, el, uh, el uh, cuando tú uh, uh, tú preparas uh, uh, antes uh, como como digo warm up uh, que alientamente que, que, que son les, los, las informaciones que, tien, que, tú tienen, que tú tienes para, da, para uh, decir que tú eres una, en, en gran forma antes de una competencia. ¿Cuáles cuál son los, los signos? Los Pe, ¿Pero solo en la competencia Com en, o en, antes o, o en el transcurso? O... Antes de una competencia, cuando, cuando tú vas a salir en, 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 aquí en Mónaco o, o en, antes de los Olímpicos, pero los días, le, the days before o the same day. On the day, el, el, el mismo día de la competencia. Ah, okay, okay. Eh, bueno, nosotros los atletas sabemos, sabemos cuando estamos al 100%, cuando estamos en buen estado físico y, y cuando estamos esperando una gran competición para demostrarlo. Eh, yo, cada vez que... que Voy a competir, eh, trato de, de, de dar lo mejor de mí. Pues tenemos mi, mi, mi entrenador y yo. Y, y bueno, y nada, y, y saber que, que estamos para grandes cosas y, y que el cuerpo y el entrenamiento que hacemos a diario nos da confianza para cumplir los objetivos que estamos planeando. We know we have signs, uh, of course. Uh, when I'm coming to to a competition, uh, things have been preparing. Uh, the, the 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 preparation we made with uh, with the coaches also uh, bring me a lot of uh, confidence. And when I'm coming to to this this competition, there are of course signs inside that, that that I feel I'm in I'm in shape. There is not something special uh, I can uh, I can tell, but the, there is uh, there are very good very good sign that I have. Uh, when, I, when I'm in a, in a good shape for a, a great competition. Une autre, une autre question. On est très complet sur uh, Unimed. Ok. So, uh, suerte para todo. Es, <laughs> es, es muy, es muy somos muy contentos de, de, de haberte una, otra vez aquí en Monaco. Y uh, mañana... Okay. A cruzar los dedos. Sí, a cruzar los, los dedos, los dedos. Gracias, muchas gracias. Yuli Rojas, mira Messi. Messi. Chao.
Je rallume. Voilà, merci d'avoir attendu. Thank you for waiting and uh, we will restart again. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here with us. We restart this uh, press conference. Our next, next guest, she, had, she has uh, seven Olympic medals, nine world titles. She was uh, two times Olympic champion in 2008 in Beijing and 2012 in London, and four times world champion, only in 100. She's the only one who have this in 2009, 2013, and 2015, and 2019. They are triplé justement. She tripled on uh, in Moscow, 2013, with 100, 200, and 4 by 1. She's uh, this year performing like she never did before. She's 34. Please welcome Shelley Ann Fraser. She's here. She's here. She's here. <laughs> Good to see you. Get rid of the mask. I mean, just like uh, you're, you're capable to do it without. Welcome back. Uh, Thank it's, you. It's a pleasure to have you. I said you younger than ever. Uh, it's Thank just you. Like <laughs> <laughs> and you look great. You look great. Thank you. 1063, 21, 97. It's like you, 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 uh, you saw performing. No, in the, the 200, it was 29, uh, 79. 2179, I will be make it right. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here back Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You having fun this year, no? Yes, I am. I'm definitely having fun. Uh, I said from like a longer time that my dream is to run below 1070 because I've been run 1070s like every year at my championship, at every championship. And to be able to break the 107 barrier is just something that I really wanted to do and now that I'm able to do it I feel so much more confident in you know my technique and being patient with the phases of the race and I think that has definitely made a difference in terms of the 200. Ouais, non, ce que je voulais faire justement cette année c'est la première fois et toujours à cette limite au niveau des championnats 10-70 et donc je voulais descendre sous les 10-70 et donc euh, je me suis dit il fallait que j'y arrive et que je sois patiente, que je travaille correctement de ce point de vue là et c'est quelque chose qui s'est produit, qui est arrivé donc euh, je suis effectivement très très heureuse These are these were one of your goals but I know you have another one as being a triple Olympic champion in a, in a, in a hundred no one no one did that i mean just like uh well except for one man you yeah, <laughs> yes yeah, there, there is only only you saying uh, well you already you, for, but for ladies i mean just yeah you um, will be the a pioneer yes no pressure at all but no. you know to be able to stand on the podium for tokyo at my fourth olympics you know is definitely on you know one of the goals and i'm working so hard towards it But, you know, for me as an athlete, I've always understood that, you know, you take it a day at a time, a step at a time. And I think coming here to Monaco to run this 200 will definitely, you know, put me in a position to make it happen. And, you know, I'm delighted that I've even had the opportunity to contend because not a lot of athletes get the opportunity to contend for a fourth, you know, fourth Olympic um, Games and, you know, three Olympic gold medals. So I'm excited about that opportunity and I'm looking forward to it. As I said, you know, things have been going great so far and, you know, I'm relishing the, the moment and the excitement of what female sprinting has become. Oui, non, c'est quelque chose de, de particulier, bien sûr, parce que peu l'ont fait. C'est vrai que Hussein l'a fait chez les hommes et chez les femmes. Personne ne l'a fait de moi. Mais il n'y a, a pas de pression. Il y a une, une, envie, une envie, bien entendu, d'aller d'être performante. Mais de, je, je ne me mets pas justement de, de pression particulière. Il y a cette étape ici, Monaco, de me dire que je suis capable, pour mon quatrième Jeux Olympiques, à pourquoi pas être performante, à pourquoi pas pu, pouvoir justement euh, être euh, avec les autres athlètes et avoir cette chance de, de, de pouvoir avoir une nouvelle médaille, une nouvelle euh, ce meeting ici et ce 200 mètres. You take off the, because you have a lot of experience now, uh, you take off the pressure and uh, 
you ma'am also so <laughs> these are these are things that makes you uh, uh relate you may have for the, uh, the the great competitions well under pressure you don't perform well under pressure so for me i more on what my expectations and what i want to achieve and less about what persons expect of me athlete that comes in you know going to the olympics it's not about what persons expect but what you expect And if I'm able to stand at that line, I know that I'll run one of the best races in my life. Oui, effectivement. Bien entendu, je voudrais enlever cette pression et on ne peut pas être performant sous la pression. C'est impossible. impossible. Donc il faut essayer de se concentrer sur ce qu'on sait faire, sur la façon dont on aide, la façon dont on, justement, on peut être performante, mais surtout, surtout éviter justement tout ce qui peut vous amener de la pression. Donc euh, voilà, c'est quelque chose qu'on apprend au fur et à mesure de, de, de sa carrière. En tout cas, moi, ce que je veux, c'est ne, ne, ne pas avoir cette pression, quoi qu'il arrive, de, que ce soit d'autres personnes qui soient autour de moi ou de, de ce qu'on peut attendre de moi, mais justement que moi je me focalise sur ce que je sais faire. What can you expect from this race tomorrow? It's a step. It's, it's one more step to this uh, yeah. main goal. Yeah, one more step. So uh, I know Monaco has a very good track, <laughs> and the last time I ran, I ran was in Kingston, and I ran that 21, and I definitely felt like you know there are phases or places in that race that I could have done better. So I'm hoping to do that tomorrow. Oui, effectivement. Ici, je sais que c'est une très, très bonne course, très, très bonne piste, pardon, et on peut être très performante ici. La dernière fois que j'ai couru, c'était à Kingston avec une, un temps moins, moins de 22 secondes sur les 21. Et donc, euh, je sais qu'il y a des phases dans cette course que, sur lesquelles je vais pouvoir me focaliser. What are these phases that you want to... Uh Concentrate on. So you want me to tell you? No, no. I, no, I, I want you to 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 tell me that you what you have in mind and uh, with your coach you've been you've been I'm sure working on certain phases in training. Yeah, I'm definitely working on phases. You know that will give me the advantage. And if I tell you, then might as well I tell everybody. Right. Else. So, so you keep it secret. <laughs> we'll see that on Friday night. Definitely. <laughs> on va on va tout voir bien entendu et je vais garder ça pour moi. Voilà. Uh, going back to Monaco, how many times you've been running here? Oh. You remember? It was like no, a, I don't I, remember. I, think I have not been here in a while. Some, some time. Maybe huh? three or four years ago. I've 2018 been was the, your last. Your, was maybe. your last meet? I'm not or sure. Or 2017? Yeah, something maybe. like this. <laughs> but this is maybe the fifth time. No, it's maybe you, the you fifth came time. sometimes. Yeah, huh? I've had good races here. Thank you. So, if you allow me, <laughs> we can ask uh, questions from uh, sure. from the the, the the journalist. Yes, first question in front, please. Thank you. Oh, hi, Sharon. I'm Stefan from L'Equipe. Uh, you you have a new coach since a few months. Could you uh, comment uh, what are the main changes compared to the past? And uh, second part of the question. Sorry. Uh, what's your opinion about the new generation of sprinters, especially like Gabby Thomas, and your comment on what happens to Shakari Richardson? Thank okay, you. Okay, well, I can answer the second part. I have no comment about what's happening, you know, in the United States. I'm really f just focused on what I want to achieve and my goals for Tokyo. In terms of my coach, I think my coach was actually a part of my old coaching system before he left. So I think what definitely has made a difference this year is my technique, is focusing on the technique. And I think that came through a lot of endurance work that I did. Because as a sprinter, usually I was so focused on my turnovers and left less about you know having big strides and maintaining at towards the end. So I definitely think that's where the difference was made, was the endurance and Keeping my technique and changing my technique. Oui, donc le, le, sur la première partie de la question euh, sur les États-Unis, j'ai aucun commentaire euh, sur les sprinteuses américaines à faire. Euh, sur la deuxième, effectivement, l'entraîneur le, le, est 
faisait partie du groupe, il était déjà présent justement et on, on s'est aperçu qu'il y avait quelque chose à changer, notamment pour que je sois plus performante sur, sur la durée, c'était l'endurance. L'endurance a été euh, améliorée, euh, on cherchait à travailler sur les foulées, les, les, les foulées qui sont toujours un peu grandes et euh, sur cette technique, la façon de le, le faire, donc euh, ce, ce, ce changement de rythme qui pouvait être fait parfois et donc l'endurance a été euh, un, point, un point clé justement pour me permettre de, de travailler sur sur ces sur ces foulées. One more question. Yes, please. Hi, Chélian. Samuel Prostimo, Radio Émotion. Euh, après tes récents chronomètres sur 100 mètres et sur 200 mètres, euh, est-ce que on peut dire que tu es dans la meilleure forme de ta vie, de ta carrière? After the, the, the times you made this year, with, can we say that you're in the best shape of your career or of your? Yeah, I would definitely. <laughs> so I definitely say I'm in the best shape of my life and what a time for that to happen. You know, uh, as I said earlier, it's been something that I've been working so hard towards to break the 10-7 barrier and to be able to do it under the conditions that I did. I know I'm definitely able to go faster. Oui, bien entendu, c'est la, la meilleure forme de ma, de ma carrière, la meilleure forme de ma vie euh, cette année, en ayant fait ces, ces temps-là, moins de 10, 70, je le cherchais depuis longtemps, et puis euh, 21 secondes aussi, donc euh, c'est quelque chose qui, euh, oui, qui est très net pour, pour moi de, de ce point de vue-là, je suis dans la meilleure forme de ma vie. Yeah, Nicolas Chélian, when we realized that uh, the Tokyo Olympics were delayed by one year, we thought about the oldest, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> wondering, wondering. No offense. But, but, no offense. <laughs> but, but it worked well. well. It worked then, well. Then, on then we can it go on. Yeah. <laughs> so th but did you think about it also? Like, or did you use it the right way? I don't know what you did exactly. Um, definitely. Um, when I heard it was um, postponed, You know, I was one of those persons who, you know, you had a great year in 2019. You kind of want to roll with that for the, you know, for the next year. And, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be one year older. I want to <laughs> be out <laughs> as quickly. But, you know, it happened. And I think it gave me the opportunity to kind of assess my situation because it was after that I made a decision to, you know, change coach. And I think it worked for me. It gave me the opportunity to kind of work into that new program because I started in April, I think, and it just gave me the opportunity to kind of assess what it is that I need um, from the coach, what it is that I needed to work on, and it just made everything come together nicely. Oui, effectivement. Bien entendu, euh, je me suis dit, ah oh, je vais avoir un an de plus, ça va être difficile, surtout qu'on sortait d'une très bonne saison 2019. Euh, et donc, bien entendu, euh, pour moi, c'était d'essayer de continuer euh, dans cette amélioration. Mais d'un autre côté, ça m'a permis de regarder ça avec euh, peut-être un peu plus de recul dans cette partie-là, cette période, et de refaire justement un point euh, pour comment on pouvait euh, améliorer la suite. C'est ce qui m'a fait changer d'entraîneur. De, et ensuite, euh, au mois d'avril, hein, ça s'est produit à, à cette période-là, ça nous a permis de retourner sur une, une progression qui a, été, qui a été favorable justement à, à ce qu'on qu voit maintenant. Une autre, une autre question On est toujours devant Yes, we have to. How do you explain the fact that in Jamaica right now the girls are going very very fast and the men seem to have a more troubles Yep. The men always have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> This is in between us. <laughs> This is in between right, us. men, there's always some issues with the men. But I don't know. Um, I Honestly, I think on the female side, I think females are a lot more competitive. Mm -hmm. So it's almost as if it's innate for them to always want to compete and to do what's necessary. While for the men, I don't know. I don't know what what's the issue, but I definitely think that you know, eventually it will work itself out. I, it's, it always happens, you know. Uh, before we had Usain, we had a lull, you know. So I think we just have to give it time, and I think they have to want it more for themselves than anything else. And I, can't, I don't think they need to think about filling Usain's shoes because that's a huge yeah. shoes to, f to fill. They just have to focus on them and what, you know, they're able to do to... You know, show what they have to offer to the sport. 
Oui, concernant justement euh, l'athlétisme la, féminin en Jamaïque, les sprinteuses, euh, je peux parler d'elles, ont, ont, ont très envie. Il y a vraiment une, 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 vraie, une vraie envie vers la compétition. Elles sont euh, extrêmement performantes et il y a quelque chose qui se passe. Sur les hommes, c'est un peu difficile. On a le sentiment peut-être qu'il y a moins d'attentes personnelles, moins d'envie. Alors, il y a une chose, il faut qu'ils se méfient parce que certains veulent être dans les chaussures de, de Usain Bolt, mais elles sont tellement grandes, ces chaussures, tellement difficiles à, à chausser. Donc euh, c'est quelque chose qu'il faut euh, éviter de... de, de c'est une direction vers laquelle il ne faut surtout pas aller parce que ça sera, ça sera peine perdue. Il y a peut-être un peu moins, moins d'attente de, de leur point de vue. C'est une période, elle va passer, cette période, elle va, elle va certainement évoluer. C'est vrai que les filles sont en ce moment plus performantes. One more question in front, devant Uh, Shelley-Anne, Nicole Jeffrey from World Athletics. Um, your race in Hungary, were you happy with it? Elaine obviously stepped up uh, a little bit and it makes, I guess it makes the, the competition between you and everyone else who is uh, a contender for the 100 metres in Tokyo more... Exciting. <laughs> exciting, interesting. <laughs> Even Usain said the other day that he um, thinks the women's 100 is going to be more exciting Then the men's. Then the men's. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> in we, we have Trayvon later on. <laughs> Don't tell him. Uh, <laughs> What do you think about the, the, com yeah, the competition for this year? If I'm being honest, nobody's happy when they lose, right? No. So no. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, but it is what it is. Uh, you know what you need to do, you know what happened in the race, and you know what needs to be fixed. And I think you have that time to fix it. You know, you can always go back and you can watch the race and where you can, where your downfall was and how you work on to make sure it doesn't happen, you know, in, in the Olympics. So, yeah, if you say I wasn't happy, no, you're not going to be happy, but it happens. And it's a, a, a learning lesson or a moment for learning and you use it to fuel you for the next one. Oui, non, effectivement, concernant la, la défaite à, à Budapest face à Ellen Thompson, moi, je dois dire une chose, on n'est pas content quand on perd. Non, je vous, bien entendu, je, je serais mentir de vous dire le contraire, mais euh, on, je vais euh, profiter de cette euh, défaite pour justement éviter de refaire les mêmes erreurs. Je sais où ça s'est passé, je sais ce que j'ai fait, et donc en vue des, des Jeux Olympiques, sur une autre confrontation, j'essaierai d'éviter, de, 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 bien entendu, de faire ces erreurs, et je serai prête pour le, pour le faire. Une autre question One more question Yes, Laura. Shelly Ann, hi. Um, obviously, you're a professional athlete, so you train every day. But in addition to that, you're a um, mother. Uh, you're very active in your community back in Jamaica, especially with uh, young girls. Uh, I think you have a foundation as well. I have two questions. One, how, how do you do it? <laughs> how, do you do, do everything? how do you do all <laughs> these things? Uh, and two, what, what would you like to achieve beyond track and field? How would you like the world to be a better place tomorrow? Um, I think, you know, I've always said that who I am, God has given me so much, you know, uh, my ability and so much, you know, help in terms of the persons he has placed in my life. And, uh, you know, I just always believe that you have to make time, you sacrifice for the things that are important. My son is very important to me. I make the time and I'm always present in that moment. So you always have to be present in each of the moments that you pick up the things that you pick up as priorities because they are priorities. My son is a priority. My training is a priority. My community, because if it wasn't for my community, I wouldn't be the person I am because they believed in me first before anybody knew who I was. You know, they always thought I was the fastest woman in the world. So, you know, that has always been a plus. And I believe that... Because of the community that I'm from, young girls need persons like me. They need more because we don't have enough motivation. We don't have enough individuals that are, you know, rising to the level that we can be proud of. And the more examples that we have that, that's coming out of a community like mine for the young girls, it's more persons they have to look up to. And it makes it easier for them to understand You know, if Shelly Ann can make it, I can make it. If Shelly Ann did it at 34, I can do it at 35, you know, because success is not always early. Sometimes it's late and later, but it happens, you know, and they need that kind of motivation. So for me to be able to have this platform and to use the platform in that way is definitely a plus and it's a blessing to, to do that. And I think for me, I just want the world to understand that as women, we're not limited by just being mothers, 
our wives, you know, we are, t we are talented. We're human beings with different abilities and capabilities that can transcend even sport. And for me, being able to achieve the things that I have after giving birth to my son, after turning 30, where everybody automatically believes as a woman, you turn 30 almost as if you're supposed to give up on your dreams and what you believe in. But that's when you work even more, you know, harder to achieve the things that, you know, you want to achieve. It's not just a man's world, it's a woman's world. It's, you know, we can coexist in the same environment and still have the same success. So that's my hope from, you know, just my career and this year alone is just understanding that you know, stop focusing on the things that persons on the outside expect of you and start focusing on your dreams and your expectations and what you know you're capable of doing and do that. I'll try to summarize. You did so many, you said so many, so many <laughs> sorry, great things. Uh, 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 no, no, no worry. No, it was, it was, in, it was incredible. Well, thank you. Uh, Effectivement, c'est euh, Dieu m'a fait comme cela, donc je suis euh, cette personne. Euh, mais on, on doit avoir des, des priorités euh, à la question, effectivement, pourquoi, comment on arrive à faire tout cela. Mes priorités, c'est mon fils, bien sûr, mon, euh, mon entraîneur, mon entraînement, euh, ma communauté, ma communauté à qui je donne aussi euh, beaucoup de temps parce que, quelles que soient les, les attentes, les, les jeunes filles ont besoin de se reconnaître dans, dans des personnes comme moi. Alors qu'on est 34 ans ou 35 ans, même plus, ça peut aider, ça peut énormément aider tout ce que voilà, tout ce qu'on peut faire. Et donc, encore une fois, <coughs> mon fils a été euh, euh, la, une des premières priorités. Lorsqu'on arrête, lorsqu'on m'a dit à 30 ans, tu arrêtes, eh bien, peut-être que c'est une fin de carrière. Non, on travaille différemment, on travaille plus. On va essayer de d'être un peu plus attentif sur certaines choses et de se donner les bonnes priorités. Pareil pour la communauté, de la, de la même façon. Quelqu'un qui peut avoir justement cette, cette attente-là lorsqu'on peut inspirer des jeunes, c'est aussi quelque chose qui me fait un bien fou et ça me permet justement de continuer de, de, de les inspirer. Donc on va être le, la meilleure personne possible avec, en recentrant justement toutes ces priorités-là pour que quelque chose puisse, puisse advenir de ces, de ces personnes en, étant, en essayant de se I forgot, I forgot a few, but, uh, but uh, une autre you. question. Oui, Nicolas. Chérie-Anne, there has been lots of talks about uh, the new super shoes in middle and long distance running. Okay. Wh what do you think about your own spikes for sprinting? Okay. Um, I guess my answer to that is, if I give you the spikes, will you run fast in them? <laughs> no. <laughs> Right? So I definitely think it's a combination. You know, Nike has known to raise their innovation in terms of, you know, shoe wear and making sure the spikes, you know, works for the athlete. But I definitely believe that the athlete has to make sure that they're ready to race in the spikes because if you don't have the prerequisite to get the work done, then it's not going to happen. So I definitely think it's a combination. I won't just say it's the shoes because then. I am basically throwing the work that I have done to be able to achieve the things that I have. Oui, non, je réponds toujours à cette question. Est-ce que si je vous donnais ces chaussures, vous seriez un très bon sprinter euh, Je pense que c'est une combinaison un peu à la fois de l'athlète qu'on peut être et puis de l'innovation qui est faite par Nike. Nike a fait toujours énormément d'innovation dans le, dans le domaine de la performance. Ça en est encore une, mais c'est toujours en fonction justement des, des, des personnes qui vont, qui vont pouvoir... Euh, être performante ou pas. And about your retirement, uh, did you think uh, already about it? I think you know that you have been talking about what is rushing me. <laughs> no. I don't. I home and all my family championship one more time but I don't know it's time when we make that decision when we're ready on oh, ne me poussez pas, me poussez pas. Lorsque j'avais regardé le calendrier, il euh, y avait les Jeux en 2020, puis euh, les championnats du monde en 2021, pas loin de la maison. Donc euh, c'était bien de me dire, écoute, je vais faire les Jeux, puis je vais faire les championnats du monde. Comme ça, on pourra venir me voir, ça sera parfait. Donc je ne suis pas sûr de pouvoir tout de suite arrêter, vu comment ça se passe. Aujourd'hui, je vous signalerai quand je serai prête. So, my next question is, the next Olympic Games are in three years. 
And no. In, in, in Paris? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> la, la réponse est non. <laughs> It's a shame for the French uh, French uh, su supporters, French fans. It's too far. <laughs> it's too, far. <laughs> too long. <laughs> Une autre question? One more question. Oui? Nicole, France. Are you excited by what's going on in women's sprinting at the moment? Does it does it help you to um, to be better to have these great fast girls around? Yeah, definitely. I'm excited about women's sprinting. Fi you know, finally, it's about us because you know I've always said that with the female athletes, we're always having head to heads. We're always showing up, and we're always having that competition. So to you know be in this place right now that female sprinting is in, it's a wonderful place to be in and I'm glad I'm in the conversation because if you're not in the conversation then I don't know but you know I'm, I'm happy about it and I'm definitely looking forward to it I've been competing for a good while <laughs> 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 right and I've seen so many sprinters that have come along in the sport and have done so much you know work and accomplishment and I think it raises the game because female sprinting has never been off it's always on you know it's always an on and I'm glad that this year is one of those years that they have t t taken it to another level and I'm excited to see what Tokyo brings for female sprinting and females overall. <rire> oui, non, c'est extrêmement motivant. Bien sûr que tout, tout, tout ce qui se passe en ce moment dans le sprint féminin mondial, c'est quelque chose qui me, qui me fait énormément plaisir. Ça me motive énormément. Et surtout, euh, je dois dire une chose, c'est qu'on fait partie tous de cette conversation. Euh, voilà, on, et, et je suis très heureuse d'être euh, parmi elles parce que ce, ce, ce niveau-là, le niveau féminin de, 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 de sprint est, est considérable et j'attends beaucoup justement de la confrontation qu'on va avoir toute euh, à, à Tokyo. Uh, last question. Uh, normally your hair, uh, you do a lot of things with it. Yeah, no, you do a lot of things with it. Some colors or different. Uh, Man. Uh, uh, what what, 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 yeah, what would you do for big. this meet or for uh, to, uh, Tokyo for Olympics? To Well, for Tokyo, I'm excited because I have so many options that, <laughs> you know, and I'm bringing them all. <laughs> so, so just look. Will be a summary of uh, yeah, all these years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll, you'll see me from a mile. <laughs> just know, anywhere I'm at, you'll see me. So, vous, <laughs> don't vous, have to worry. <laughs> vous, allez me, vous allez me voir à Tokyo, il n'y a pas de souci. J'ai envie de revoir un petit peu toutes mes coiffures comme avant et peut-être un, un résumé de tout ça. Donc, vous allez me voir à, à, à 1500 mètres à la. À, 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 avant, avant de me voir, vous me verrez facilement. Voilà. M merci, Chelian. No, no more questions, plus de questions. Merci. Thank you very much. You're and uh, wish you good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Me and my hair is leaving. <laughs> Next guest here with us, uh, <coughs> it's a uh, world junior record holder, 997, uh, the first uh, junior to go under 10 seconds uh, with a great performances, third bronze medalist at the world championship in Beijing 2015, world indoor champion uh, in 2016 and uh, with a great performance already this year, 977 personal best, this was in Miramar, uh, is uh, the man to beat in uh, 2021 and looking forward, of course, to the Olympic Games uh, coming here in Monaco with the seven all best uh, performance with this uh, performance now and uh, US champion in front of Baker and Curley. Welcome, Draven Bromel. Thank you very much for being here with us in Monaco. What can you expect from a meeting like, uh, like Monaco this year? 
Uh, it's a it's a beautiful lineup, great athletes. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of fast times. Uh, I always I always admire coming here, beautiful place. Uh, so when me and my agent talked about races, I was like, I want to go back to Monaco. Um, I missed it. Uh, obviously, coming here in 2015 for relay camp, and it was it was just you know beauty into the eye so I knew I wanted to come back here and race and I knew that it's going to be I knew it was going to be a great lineup of guys and I knew it was going to be a great meet all, all around oui, lorsqu'on en parle avec euh, mon entraîneur et mon agent, dit mais c'est l'endroit où, où je veux revenir. Voilà, c'est un meeting qu'il faut sur lequel il faut être. Je suis venu ici euh, pour euh, le camp d'entraînement avec le relais 4x100 en 2015 et on n'avait qu'une envie, c'est de, de revenir sur ce, sur ce, ce super meeting et, et c'est pour ça que je suis là une nouvelle fois. 977, I mean, and I'm sure you had a lot to learn from that race. You, you feel that uh, there is uh, something you can improve on it. Uh, yeah, so I look I look back at the race a lot, just seeing where I went wrong, things that I did going into the race, uh, the environment. It, it was a lot. Um, had multiple. We had two rounds. Uh, and obviously, if you watch the race, you see that it was a lot of people missing. So trying to stay um, locked in into the race, like still taking it serious, even with just the four people that was in the race. So for me, it was just all, all about the repetition of it. And then go back with my coach and look at what we could do better to run faster. Oui, il y avait effectivement beaucoup de choses dans cette course avec des conditions particulières. Il faisait extrêmement chaud. Beaucoup de, de concurrents étaient aussi, aussi là pour réussir quelque chose. Donc ça a fait euh, basculer un peu, un peu les choses. Que l'on peut, peut améliorer encore par rapport à cette compétition. Et la chose que vous ne devriez pas miss cette année, c'est les trials. Et les trials sont aussi des trials que vous avez eu, qui sont venus à la finale et ne pas les manquer. Et vous étiez, comme je l'ai dit, vous avez fait bien. Vous avez senti bien. Oui, c'était une bonne course. Allant dans le meet, il y avait des trials que vous avez eu, qui étaient venus à la finale. We, we had a goal to set. We just wanted to make the team. Uh, we, we prepared, we stayed focused, and our main drive was to be on that podium going to Tokyo. Uh, I knew going through the rounds, it was going to be a lot of competition. Uh, so I just had 9 to keep uh, in the semis, but easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, so was, we, we wanted to make sure that we was uh, in the right fit to be able to go through these rounds as smooth and easy as possible so we don't exert too much you, energy. You didn't want to push too much. Yeah. yeah. And so we wanted to get to the finals to be able to have as much energy as possible to go out there and make the team. Oui, non, bien entendu, l'objectif c'était forcément d'être dans les trois premiers, d'être sur le podium, hein, de, de faire l'équipe. Donc euh, ça, c'était la chose la plus importante. Ensuite, on s'est retrouvé en demi-finale à faire une, une bonne course, ne pas laisser trop de force dedans. Et encore une fois, l'objectif restait, restait la finale. We said this is one step. Would you do another uh, race before Tokyo, or you go from uh, from Monaco? You you will be this will be the last uh, competition. Uh, right now, I have gate shit after after this. Right. So after that, I'll just be focused on Tokyo. Okay, for sure. Tokyo, as I said, you may be one of the favorite, but there will be a good line here in Monaco. It's like a good repetition from. A I was like, shoot, this might be the finals at the Olympics anyway. So it, it was crazy to see it, but you know, it's 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 all fun at the end of the day. Oui, c'était effectivement lorsque on venait ici de se dire, bien entendu, il y a cette, il y a cette compétition, il y en aura deux. Et j'ai envie de dire que cette, euh, ce, ce, cette ligne de, de départ qu'il y a ici à Monaco, euh, elle, est, elle est superbe parce que ça peut être la finale olympique. Ça peut être des garçons qu'on retrouvera justement en finale olympique pour se, pour se préparer. The, the world needs to have big names in sprint. You know that. Uh, is this something that puts you some pressure or is this something you... you been learning on it and uh, you don't think about it uh, I don't really think about it I'm I'm not that type of athlete like I come out here I do what I can and at the end of the day the result will be the result uh, for me it's all about sending a message of hope and try to show kids out there that they can be anything they put their mind to oui, non, je ne pense pas du tout. C'est vraiment quelque chose. Pour moi, c'est euh, me retrouver. Je suis qui je suis de ce point de vue-là. Et c'est euh, envoyer peut-être un message d'espoir et de se dire, voilà, ce sont des choses que, que l'on peut, peut faire, comme, comme moi, quelqu'un d'assez simple. Et donc, euh, de me retrouver ici euh, à être l'un des, des meilleurs, oui, il n'y a, a pas quelque chose de, 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 de particulier que ça. If you allow me, we have uh, questions from the, the journalist. Uh, qui veut poser la première question devant Nicolas. 
Hello, Trevon. Stefan from L'Equipe, French newspaper. After all the injuries you got those last few years, do you have a daily routine, a specific work? Uh, it's, a, it's a full day of work. You know, we go from um, early morning to mid afternoon, uh, and it consists. Uh, sitting down with coaching, just going over things within practice and within races throughout the season. It's, it's our nine to five. Oui, non, c'est quelque chose, c'est un, 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 vrai, un vrai travail. Ça commence tôt le matin jusqu'à assez tard dans l'après-midi, euh, avec euh, bien entendu l'entraînement, en, le, 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 le procédé de, de récupération, tout ce qui va avec. C'est un, un vrai métier et c'est quelque chose que l'on fait euh, le plus correctement possible. Une autre question Nicole Yes, in front. Um, Trayvon, the Nicole Jeffrey from World Athletics. Um, the US trials is such a big thing, so much hype. Um, do you need a kind of a bit of rest after that, sort of just to get your mind um, fresh again and your body fresh again and, um, and get sort of refocused? What kind of process is that following the trials? Oh, yeah. Uh I definitely say uh, with U.S. trials is always going to be a fast race. Um, running, having to run fast throughout those rounds consistently is very tough on the body. So once you get done, uh, the smartest thing to do is to uh, relax, let the body do its healing, get back to work, um, and watch and watch after all the things that you may pick up do throughout the meet. Um, for me, it was just meeting with my physio. Uh, cleaning up some things, making sure everything is firing right and, and healing the way it's supposed to heal out of, you know, tearing those little fibers, run, running fast throughout rounds. Um, and once we get back rolling, then we back to putting in the hard work to get prepared. Oui, il est important. Bien entendu, ça a été le, le, tout le travail de récupération pour pouvoir euh, aller, aller jusqu'au bout. Et donc ça, c'est un travail constant avec le, le physio, quelque chose que l'on fait régulièrement, essayer de récupérer le maximum de fibres, essayer d'être le, le plus euh, euh, à l'aise possible, de retrouver de la souplesse, retrouver justement de, 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 de quelque chose qui nous permette justement de tenir sur, sur l'ensemble de, de la compétition. C'est quelque chose qu'on qu fait consciencieusement tous ensemble et, et ça fonctionne. Une autre question Oui. Maurizio Batti, Lo Monaco. Uh, what motivates you uh, um, to give your best uh, each time you compete in uh, a sport uh, challenge Uh, the thing that motivates me the most uh, are the kids that's watching. Uh, for me, anybody who know my story, I grew up feeling like nobody seen me as a kid, regardless if that was athletics or as that as a person. Like I felt like I was a shadow to most of the world. Um, I, when I started doing athletics, my main goal was to motivate people to understand that you could be whatever you want, no matter how many people go against the odds and say you can or you won't. I want to show people that you could be whatever. Um, so every time I go to practice, every time I step on the line, I think about that little girl or that little boy that's watching me and what, and what example I'm showing as an athlete and as a person. Like, all odds has always been against me my whole life, and I just want to show people they can fight against that fight. C'est quelque chose, bien entendu, qui, pour moi, est, est, la motivation, elle est, elle est là. Elle vient du fait que lorsque j'étais enfant, j'étais vraiment dans l'ombre, j'étais rien. Et donc, euh, se dire qu'on arrive à ce niveau-là, c'est quelque chose qui me motive et parce que ça peut aussi inspirer les, les jeunes, hein, inspirer un jeune, une jeune fille, un jeune garçon. Euh, voilà, de se dire qu'on sort de l'ombre et qu'on arrive, on peut le faire. Ce sont des choses qui, euh, qui sont effectivement très, très motivantes et, et qui me permettent justement de, de tenir comme cela. Une autre question Nicolas, devant. Trayvon, uh, after Usain Bolt uh, won the last three titles on 100 at the Olympics, it looks like, obviously, it will be a new area. And we were thinking it would be very open. And suddenly, you look like the very hot favorite for the Olympics. The meet has been an opportunity to set an example. For me, uh, I such a great example for the 100 meters. Uh, I think now it's just time for another person to tell their story, uh, to go on and project something beautiful. Uh, for, like I said, for me, it's to set an example to show hope, uh, to let people know that they can go out and chase their dreams and not be ashamed to doing what, uh, doing what they want to do. Oh, you know, effectivement, moi, je, je, mon, mon but, bien entendu, après... Uh 
après ce qu'a fait Usain Bolt qui a montré énormément de, de, de choses et ça c'était très bien pour notre discipline mais je vais surtout essayer d'être euh, voilà, euh, moi-même bien entendu il y a quelqu'un d'autre qui, euh, qui va être champion olympique mon objectif, c'est encore une fois, je l'ai dit, hein, c'est euh, essayer de, de donner de l'espoir, de l'espoir à tous les jeunes qui pourraient regarder, se dire que voilà, c'est quelque chose de, de possible de faire et ça c'est mon, mon, mon vrai, euh, ma, 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 mon attente. Une autre question Alors, Devant. Craven, were you surprised by the impact the U.S. trials had on general media? I mean, not the track and field community, but the, the biggest bigger know, picture. media, bigger picture after what happened to Shakari. And what's your opinion about this kind of new population getting into track and field, even if they're not very focused on, on your sport? Is it a good thing or some people told silly things? I feel that eyes on the sport is eyes on the sport. It's something, you know, we may not have had a lot of over the past few years. So at the end of the day, I'm happy that more people are being aware of, the, of our uh, sport in track and field. Oui, non, on l'avait pas ça avant. Effectivement, là, peut-être, euh, je suis assez content que ça puisse ça puisse s'ouvrir un peu plus, euh, justement, de, de ce point de vue-là. Have you seen that, that uh, your president Joe Biden had to answer to a question and saying the rules are the rules? Oh. Have you seen that? No, it was on a social network, so it's something special. One journalist asked him if he had an opinion on a, on Jack Harry uh, uh, sanction, and he said, well, he didn't know. So he said the rules are the rules. It, it was good. It was, <laughs> it was not it was not easy. <laughs> une autre une autre question. Oui, Nico. Uh, Trayvon, what do you need to get out of this race here tomorrow to feel like you're on track for the Olympics? What do you want to see from yourself? Uh, it's just repetition. Um, I know uh, throughout the year, our coach tell us, you know, we're going to get these races in, the tune up for the big dance at the end of the year. Um, obviously, whatever happens tomorrow does not take away anything uh, what will happen in Tokyo, you know, so it's all about preparation, it's all about uh, keying, in on, keying in on the little details. Oui, on continue effectivement notre progression, tout ce qui va se passer demain, à mon avis, on ne pourra pas avoir de, de, de grandes euh, déductions sur ce qui va se passer à Tokyo, euh, c'est une, une chose, une, un passage, une progression pour, pour tout le monde. What can you expect in terms of times? I'm not saying only here, but uh, if you have something in mind. I honestly don't think about times. Uh, I know if we set up the race perfectly, uh, knowing the competition, uh, I, I know it's going to be fast regardless. Uh, I've seen times ran here over the years. I know what the track can produce. So it's just all about keying in on running the perfect race. Non, je me focalise pas du tout sur le, le chrono, sur le temps. Là, on, justement, on, on travaille de cette façon-là, en se disant que chaque fois qu'on va sur la, la piste, on essaye d'être le plus performant possible. Les, les, les temps, les chronos, j'ai vu ici des, des chronos qui ont été, qui sont euh, produits sur cette piste, je le sais. Donc, euh, on verra, on verra ça après. Une autre question, one more question. No more questions. So it's uh, time to thank you and uh, wish you the best and good luck for here and for Tokyo. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that. Merci. Thank you, Trayvon. For sure. Thank you very much. Good job. Yeah, all
Voilà, merci, merci beaucoup d'être euh, de retour. Thank you very much for being back. We have a, our next guest. On accueille nos... Our next guest is, uh, well, he did a great performance here in Monaco. In 2016, he was 239 with uh, one of the, his best memories. In, uh, European Indoor Championship last uh, winter. Uh, and uh, did 233 in Firenze this year. Please welcome Gianmarco Tamberi from Italy. He's coming. <laughs> he was he was this he was speaking with a. Uh, he went back. <laughs> yeah, no on time. It's like the French. We we need 15 minutes. Grazie, <laughs> prego. <laughs> Please take take the mic and uh, take off the mask. Yep. Yes. Uh, Here we are. Sorry <laughs> for <laughs> the late. I was speaking with. Uh, <laughs> Jamako, thank you very much for, for attending this press conference. So we said here you had the best memory and the worst at the same time, on the same 239 and this uh, injury. Uh, speak about, about it quickly and, and, and like this we, we leave it as a memory. Yeah, if I will start to speak about this meeting for me, I probably will start crying too. <laughs> so I don't want to. <laughs> no, but by the way, uh, I really all my career passed through this uh, this track because uh, the national record to 39. I was so close to my biggest dream, the Olympic game, and I was in the best shape ever. And then it happened. What it happened? Uh, to be back in that shape, and my my dream from that day was. Olympic game with the same goal and uh, here we are so I frustration many times uh, whatever it was very difficult to be back uh, uh, to aim for a for a so big goal so but now looking forward to compete again exactly <laughs> yeah, 233 It seems that, as you said, you're in a, in a good shape to work on it. And what can you expect from this meeting tomorrow? Uh, I'm not really satisfied with my results this year because I feel really good. I'm in a great shape physically. I am, I'm struggling a bit with my uh, technique. So uh, three days ago in Hungary, we tried to, to jump with very low speed. That is not my kind of jump because I'm a speed jumper. So, But to try to find some balance. Tomorrow, I will... I will go for it. I mean, uh, I can't wait anymore. It's the last chance before Olympic game, and I want to arrive to the Olympic game with some good result in my back. So I just want to put all myself in this competition tomorrow. And this is my home. I feel like my home. This is, <laughs> of course, of two thirty three in Firenze. You can do better in your second home here. It's like uh, this is important. There will be a lot of Italian. You know that. It's uh, the the organizer said uh, like thirty three percent of the stadium will be Italian, even maybe more. Yeah, that's make me so happy. I remember in 2016 when I competed the year, but also two, the two years after in 2018, it was a huge atmosphere because we are close to Italy and Italian fans, of course, they, they want to support Italians. Uh, I just read about very bad news in the uh, about the, the crowd in Tokyo that there will not be anybody just it's a few hours ago yeah. Uh, yeah and that make me a bit sad but I want to enjoy 100% tomorrow because I won't I won't have them in Tokyo but I will take them with me in my mind so I will take all them their energy this is part of our sport to communicate and you like this you like to to make this show with a, with a, with a crowd to have this connection with them. yeah I love it I mean I'm coming from basketball that is a game uh, team game so I just want to be part of a team and the spectators for me is part of my team because they give me so much energy when I jump and I can't just say I'm doing it alone because I'm doing it with them and that's why I, I really need the, their energy I, I feel that without them I'm another person I'm trying to understand how to keep this energy inside me also when they are not there because this year last year it happens many it, it happened many times that we were alone in a stadium and it, it, it will happen also in Tokyo lucky but 
I'm trying to find a way to fill them inside me and H how did you handle this period this covid period for during training and also this competition without public how how did you handle it uh luckily i, I was uh so concentrated so focus on my goal so every everything that happened in this year uh didn't didn't uh, move my goal it just uh, tell me in my mind there always uh, an opportunity to improve like last year when they told us the olympic game were postponed Of course, I was really sad after that news. Um, it was really heartbreaking for me. But the day after, I woke up and I told myself, you have another year to work on it. You can find some way to uh, make better jump for the Olympic Games. So there is always, even in a bad moment, an opportunity. It depends how you react on from a situation. You're, uh, of course, big star in uh, the high jump world, but also in Italy now. Uh, what... Uh, Can you say about and you maybe you can help them also to be to be performing the the, the final in between Italy and, and, and England uh, on Sunday? So this will be something. If you do a great performance before, <laughs> that may help them. Who knows? That's a, a really surprising final. I mean, sport in Italy is going very well because we are now we have also Berrettini in England that he is <laughs> in the semi-final in yes. tennis and uh, Ital basket. They qualify for the Olympic game just one week ago. I'm I'm a huge fan of basketball and the football is in the final. So we are going well and that's motivating me actually. <laughs> so tomorrow I will try my best to be uh, part of this big group that is the uh, Italian sport and uh, I really congratulate myself with them and I'm looking forward to see them on Sunday. And, and talking precisely about track and field, Italian track and field is also improving a lot since the last two, three years. Yeah, we are, I think the Federation did a great work in the last four or five years. We, we was starting from a low average uh, level, but now we are growing and growing and growing and growing. And that's m very important Uh, if we see the future of track and field in Italy, because it's not very uh, followed sport, but that's mayb maybe with some results, it's gonna be more interesting for people. Th they need role model, and you feel like it. You feel like you can inspire a lot of uh, young young kids, young boys, young girls also uh, to come. Y yes, yes, of course. That's what we are trying to do. Like uh, track and field is uh, uh, like. That kind of sport that in uh, Italy is not really followed by the, uh, the fans. Uh, the yeah, the, the fans. Uh. But that's what tr we are trying to do. I mean, this sport it l it teach you everything about about fairness, about uh, competitive, uh, being competitive, about uh, follow a dream and never give up, go through everything. And in my story, I can really uh, I could speak for five hours about what track and field teach me. And uh, I think that we have a lot to learn from this. Thank you. So we can open to the questions, please. Uh, who wants to start uh, with one question? Gianmarco, please. No, no question? Nicolas, tu n'as pas une question? <laughs> Nicole? Yes, thank you. We were, we were full. <laughs> Um, Jimbo, the Nicole Jeffrey from World Athletics. Sometimes the high jump, um, it really catches fire some seasons and, every, and a lot of people jump really high. This year so far, it feels like it's waiting, waiting. Do you feel like um, this might be the place where it finally catches fire or do you think it might be Tokyo before that happens? Uh, in my opinion, actually, track and field in, I, in I, uh, high jump this year is not uh, a, a low level. I mean, we uh, the level is a bit It seems like low because Mutatsu Bondarenko and Druin in the past year they did something amazing from 2013 to 2016. 240 it seems like if a competition doesn't finish with 240 it was a bad competition. So now we, we, we went back in a normal level, that's what I think. And uh, of course the Olympic game is coming so tomorrow I expect people to jump high, I expect to myself to jump high. Uh, I, I guess the Olympic game in Tokyo will be one of the highest Olympic game ever because uh, in high jump because uh, there are many people who can jump really high so I expect the medal really really high uh, height. If there is one main man to chase so far is Nida Sekao. Nida Sekao we did 237 but he's not the only one. Uh, I would say I would say five people who can. Okay. I put myself out no, of no, this. You, you, you <laughs> can be among them, yes. <laughs> Because of, uh, you know, <laughs> superstitious. <Yeah. laughs> If I s have to say five names, I will say Mutaz, of course, because he is the, the greatest high jumper. Yeah, yeah. he's the greatest high jumper ever. 
Maxim Nedazekau, yes. uh, Ivan Yuk, Hanaki Minko, right. and the last one will be Arizon, the high jumper and long jumper from USA. <laughs> he's, he's the man, he's, the man uh, he's a new newcomer, but yeah. what he did in... Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I probably, if I try to do long jump, I don't know if I reach six meters, so <laughs> <laughs> it's really impressed me a lot what he's doing. He's, I mean, high jump and long jump are the opposite. It's like... He's been like number one in high jump uh, in the world and long jump for a while. Yeah. I think it's like being number one in tennis and in beach volley. Right. <laughs> Something like this. Different sport. Yeah, it's so totally different, believe me. Yeah, th I understand that. One more question. Wait, oui, Laura. Gianmarco, um, one of the um, nicest pictures, in my opinion, from the Euro indoors in, uh, in Turun was when uh, you were competing in the final and the whole of the Italian team was actually supporting you from the stands. Um, I don't think there was any crowd there either. No. But um, do you feel like a, a like maybe not a leader, but a role model, model f it within the Italian team? And do you think they will be enough to push you high in Tokyo? I hope so. I mean, I, uh, I'm the captain of this wonderful team that is growing and is very young. And they're, uh, they, they helped me a lot in... Uh, in uh, Torun to to pass the bar, and I think they everybody knows in Italy what I passed through and what it means for me this year, what it means for me Olympic game. Just a few hours ago, uh, another Italian jumper, Filippo Randazzo, we were taking a walk, and he looked at me and he said, "I can't even imagine what you will feel that day because we everybody know what you passed through and what you did for be back in this Olympic and with this uh, motivation." So. I think they they know very well my situation and they try to help me to realize my dream and I'm I would be forever grateful with everybody that helps me in this year because it was not just the team but uh, many people in the street who uh, see me and just give me a hug or a hand in the shoulder and say you can do it believe in yourself try to try to go on yeah I I really appreciate this kind of support in uh, in your young age, you're not old, huh? don't uh, don't tell uh, me this. But in your young age, you you had this uh, half barb uh, sometimes, so called uh, special haircut. Would you would you go back to to this or? Uh? Uh, it's not just about young age because if I tell if I tell you that three days ago I had half beard. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, until this indoor, I always competed with half beard. It was. Uh, the first time I didn't, it was in this indoor season because I had I, I wanted to try to change something because I didn't find a way to jump hike. I don't, I'm not telling that the bird no, no, did, no. <laughs> but it, it just change your comfort zone, just to try to uh, we say uh, to change things. Let's say like this. So uh, right now I I'm just in that kind of mood that if I want to. I will shave my half beard. If I don't want to, I will not. So okay. it depends on how I feel in I in how I want to be in a competition. What I want to do just is not that kind of superstitious that I'm sl sla slave or yeah, yeah. yeah. You and don't so want to be slave of it. Yeah, I I don't want. I just want to be as powerful as I can with whatever beard, no beard, half beard, whatever, half half hair, no half hair, <laughs> <laughs> white hair. Yeah. <laughs> I win my year this winter. <laughs> 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 Another question, Laura? Yes. Um, uh, Italians often have, vi have a very strong um, uh, family uh, links. And I think your coach is your dad, right? Yep. Is it, is it always like roses or is it sometimes... <laughs> How, how can you... You should, you should ask. It's sometimes roses. <laughs> 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 that, that will be the correct do question. You, do, you, do you argue or can you argue? Are you allowed to? We argue a lot. I mean, uh, it's more argue than uh, <laughs> roses. Uh, it's, it's not easy at all. Uh, I think there are many, many pros to be uh, part of a team that is dead and son. And there are many, many virtues also. You have to handle the virtues and take the pros because uh, this kind of team for sure as something more. There is some emotional more than a normal team. But there are the, the bad things that sometimes son and father come out and when it, come out, when it comes out, there is a problem. So what we are trying to do is to be coach and athlete, coach and athlete, coach and athlete with the trustness of a father and son. Because you will forever trust a father, you will forever trust a son more than what 
whoever else. But coach and father, uh, coach and uh, uh, athlete is the uh, relationship that must be. When, when you feel uh, w when something I coming back at home, sometimes it's uh, uneasy when it. In to talk to each other. How, how do you? <laughs> okay, good. I move. <laughs> as I told mission we will take in the future <laughs> right now we, we must follow this uh, this relationship more than ever because if we have to uh, if we fight for some other stupid things that it uh, yeah, it happened yeah. from father and son yeah. it will uh, affect the uh, the the training and that's can happen can't happen it can happen that's important une autre question Nicole when uh, with coming back um, after the terrible injury you had, is it more a mental thing or is it more a physical thing to get back to the level? Uh, you said it was like a new career. Yeah. Um. Wow, uh, it's been really hard, hard period to me from 2017, 18, 19, uh, 19. All those years, it seems to me more difficult than the year before. Every step to come back, it was more frustrating to me because I never wanted to arrive to achieve uh, world uh, class like being the top 10 in the world. I never wanted, I mean, I will never start to rehab myself to arrive in the top 10 or in the final in Doha or whatever. My goal it was to aim uh, for the same aiming I had in 2016 in this track before this injury. So it's been really difficult mentally, it's been really difficult physically because that injury uh, changed all my body and after that injury I had many, many problems in my body cause due to, to this uh, big injury. I had to surgery two times because the first one it wasn't enough and I had many, many injuries that follow that, that one. And um, after that, high jump is a really traumatic sport and uh, I had an injury during the jump, so uh, it, it, it would be much, much better if I had the same injury but going down t from the stairs because you don't, your mind don't remember what happened and you're not scary to do it all again. So the first years I put many, many mistakes in my, tec in my technique, I put in many mistakes because I was scary to injure again. And then when the scariness go, but the mistakes stay. And I worked a lot for the years till now to try to clean get, the get this rid of this unconscious thing yeah, that exactly, uh, that, uh, exactly. Would, would, uh, would break you. Uh, where are you stronger now? Where are you stronger? Because you're another person also, and physically or mentally, where are you stronger? You know what? When, when you think that whatever it happened, you can go over. So I, I remember in 2016, I was trying to jump 241 here because. I, I, w I will be honest with you guys. I was probably one of the favorite with somebody else for the Olympic game, but I wasn't feeling uh, mm, good enough for my opponent. They were with 240 uh, PB, and I was my PB was 239. So in my mind, uh, it was very important to clear 240 before Olympic. That's stupid, but you don't feel good enough. I mean, that's the problem. I was. I was with this kind of fear that if I didn't handle 240 before Olympics, I was one step behind them. That's, that's not how it is. Now I feel that in Tokyo, some magical thing will happen to me yeah. because that's my game. I, I will, I'm not feeling that that day I need to have jump like they have yeah, because that day I feel is my day. So that's what it changed. It changed that you're more, you can go over whatever it happens. If now I, no, I will not say. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will not say, but whatever happens, yes. you can go over yeah, it. Over it but yeah. It's just about how much you want to be over it. At that time, you felt not legitimate, legitimate to, to, to be one of the favorites. Uh, I, I was feeling one of them, but I want, I want so much to win the gold medal that in my mind, I must jump 240 before the Olympic. That okay. It doesn't make any sense if you jump 239. No. We are speaking about this yeah. and they won the Olympic game with 238 of course so there was no sense just in my mind I was watching my opponent they 
all, uh, all not, but the, who, who was aiming for the goal, they had uh, a PB of 240. So in my mind, uh, I must have a PB of 240 to, yeah. to fight with them. But, but that's a weakness. I mean, it was, exactly. it was a weakness, of course. Now it's but different. Yeah, I prefer to don't <laughs> if I have to choose I prefer to don't pass through all this stuff <laughs> and don't have this kind of but of course what happened happened. One more question. Wait over there. Hi, this is Mario from Swiss TV. As you mentioned, uh, you had to change and adapt things after your injury, after surgery, but to jump, is it in the same way you jumped in 2016 or have you really changed anything uh, if you compare to 2016? Uh, the goal is to jump in the same way. Uh, as I was telling before, what we are trying to do, what we, are, we tried to do all these years, it was to clean the mistakes that I put on in 2017 and the first half of 2018 because I was carried to jump. So the goal is to achieve the same jump. It's a speed jump, go go fa as fast as I can and take off. Uh, of course, there are some limitations because as fast as you go, as uh, without any mistakes, uh, how you say, uh, as fast as you go, as less mistakes you, you, yeah, you can do. In, yeah. yeah. And so, <coughs> of course, from now I will not, uh, until, until last competition, I was trying to reach the perfection of jump. From tomorrow, I will try to jump high. <laughs> that's, that's the difference. That's, that's the difference. One more question. We Nicole, in front. Um, I remember Mutaz saying that you really supported him when he got injured. Um, and um, watching him be successful in Doha, did it also give you encouragement that he had come back so you could also get back to your level? I won't be honest again with you. First reaction. Actually, I was really happy for him because he is a huge friend of mine. Uh, I've been also in his wedding. We are really friends. So I was really, really happy that he handled to win that competition. But first reaction of me when I went home in the hotel, it was, oh, he did it. And I didn't. Like, we had the same injury. And after one year, he reached again that height. He won the World Championship. I always... Whenever they ask me, I always say Barshim is the greatest high jumper ever because I really believe that. And then I try to, uh, real I try to uh, go 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 inside this and try to understand what happened. And then I realized that his PB was 243, and probably he would be able to jump even 246, 247 when he was in the greatest shape. So after one year, he jumped 237 in Doha, and he's about six centimeter less. And what I did is was the same. It's just my PB was less than him. <laughs> so uh, our recovery was si very similar, but it was better than me. That's, uh, that's the only answer. You jump a great person and a uh, very, very good athlete that you can just learn from him. So he motivated me. One more and last question. Uh, Dernière. No more question. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, wish you the good luck for tomorrow. Welcome back to your and second home. And more for Tokyo. Eh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For <laughs> sure to Tokyo too. Uh, we hope to, to have you here again. And uh, thank you very much, Gianmarco. You're a great. Thank person. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Vous avez noté que je n'ai pas traduit en français, mais son italien était très proche du français, donc je pense que vous avez compris. Still two athletes to come, deux athlètes encore. Sif Hanassan et Kevin Mayer.
Merci de, de revenir. Thank you for being back. We have uh, our next guest. Holder for 1500, five, the hour and a five world champion in Doha, 1500 for a triple in uh, in Tokyo. Welcome Sifan Hassan from the Netherlands. Sifan, welcome back to Monaco. You know the place. Yeah, I know. I really like here. I, <laughs> I like to come back here. I like the organization. I like the. I like Monaco on track and everything. It's always amazing. You did here on track. You did also on the road. You 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 know the place. What can you expect from a a meeting like this tomorrow? <laughs> Uh, I think tomorrow will be special for us. Uh, 2021 is uh, uh, all the athletes are doing amazing because very to uh, compete. To yeah, that's I think. Uh, then tomorrow, I think many athletes will. Uh, I'll of, be happy to of course, it was terrible last year. How did you manage to train during this in these conditions? It was really hard. It's very hard. I think uh, not only for me, everybody, but uh, it's kind of actually uh, grateful. After that, wherever I get, I'm happy and uh, we appreciate everything, every moment. And uh, I think I improve that. That uh, I learn a lot of patience. I learn a lot of uh, be happy wherever I get it. And. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, it was very hard, especially for me. Even 2021, um, uh, um, June, um, in in January, February, March was really hard. They were from one place to other place. I was in Tenerife, in Kenya, uh, in Netherlands. To change places yeah. for training. Yeah. Yeah, because I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't get get an American visa. It was not easy to travel. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. so hard. It, it was hard. hard yeah. But it started pretty well with this 10,000. The world record for two days after European record, but it was a, a good start of the season. Yeah, I, I, it was a world record. I, I didn't go. I know I uh, had really shaped for uh, under 28. My endurance was really, really good uh, because I was almost trained for uh, two years for. I, I, I haven't competed. Also, so happy. I like ten thousand. Me also make me gonna be easy. It's You've been trained. Uh, actually, this year was my speed. After three, when the race also with a, with a really big famous athlete there, and after that I was really all think about Monaco. I was prepare my speed, but uh, still I couldn't prove money. 
uh, I could improve more, but um, I'm not, yes, like 2019, they sharp the moment when I ran the last uh, 400 meters after 5K or after 500 meters, 57, okay. but I'm really in good shape, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm grateful. It seems, it seems to be. Uh, your goal in Tokyo, because you're on three... possible you will have to choose or will you keep everything um, I just want to keep everything until the last moment because I just want to flexibility and uh, before though I also I did it and uh, uh, after Florence I was I was just uh, you know I, I was actually decided to do five kilometers and 10,000 meters but when I ran without uh, I don't really have a speed around 353 it was like some uh, inside me like <laughs> the love of 1500 why not to, come to keep back. it <laughs> <laughs> and I was like why not to keep it and just look and, and cancel or if and I cancel, cancel because it. some some races you will have to run twice a day sometimes yeah yeah I have to run twice a day and uh, yeah it doesn't matter I will uh, in Doha I did one day before if I want to cancel I will cancel the, which one I can't in the last day if I want to keep those I will keep it but it just I just want a flexibility I don't you have want to flexibility rush, yeah. but uh, uh, do you keep in mind that you will do everything? Yeah. So we open the, the questions from uh, the floor, from the journalist who wants to, to, to start, Nicola. Hi, Sifan. I'd like to know what is your favorite event, actually, because you could run so fast from 15 to half marathon, probably. Uh, but what is your favorite? The one you feel the more comfortable and, and so on. The one is exciting and it's make me scary is 50 hundred meter. <laughs> that's, that's a big, big yeah. guy, white guy. <laughs> yeah, 50 hundred meter less, something like make you really scary, you don't know until the last moment and exciting. 10,000 meter is like hard worker. Like you work hard every time, like you have to push. And you are a hard worker. We know uh, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, I, I can't choose. I think I both I was like, uh, after Doha, I was like, I don't know what to choose it. Yeah, I think I, uh, if I want to be again one of the athletes, I want to be 10,050. 1,500 meters. <laughs> if you saw it, they saw it already. <laughs> <laughs> one more question. challenge of the five and the ten for the Olympics but it sounds like your thinking has changed a little bit um, since then because you'd already you'd already won the combination of 1500 and 10,000 in Doha um, but uh, it sounds like the, the you to let it go yeah it is because uh, you know like I say it's, it's hard it's no problem I think tomorrow's not gonna be like this <laughs> I, <laughs> I think, <laughs> like I say, you don't know until the last, but when you finish, you're uh, like, uh, you get emotional, something like just make you happy. Uh, if I choose 15, 10, it's going to be really hard for me, the 10,000 meters, because uh, uh, I race in the night, a day before, like uh, almost maybe not even 20 an hour different between the final 10,000 meter and 1500 meter. Uh, uh, that I, I want to just keep in my mind and don't want to uh, cancel it because I, I, like I, I push myself harder. Uh, I want some really tough, hard goal. I, I, um, I like to get challenged myself. Yeah, that's... Hey, Nicola. Just to follow up, would it also be a way to make history a challenge? You would be probably the first woman or me or Zatopek maybe. Zatopek. I mean, I, I mean, it's it it would be an. <laughs> it could be. It could be. I mean, uh, if you look at two thousand. Uh, 2009, and they, I had an opportunity, big opportunity, 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter and gold uh, to win. And uh, people 
say no. You have big opportunity because I also the lady I beat, I win is all them in 1500 meters. They also have uh, fi 5000 meters, sorry. They also run already. They have tired in the leg. So you're going to compete against them. You're going to have two gold media. I say life is not about medallia. It is not about gold. It is also about history. Even I don't know it is possible because before nobody some before done it. And uh, and I know I have to take the race also so hard because I already have 10,000 meters in the, my leg that I never done before. 10,000 was 2019 my first, uh, yeah. Uh, who knows? It's, uh, life is not all about the gold. It could be about the history. I'm <laughs> sure neither are not going to be happy <laughs> to talking, say that. Talking about... Great time. <laughs> you know what? Actually, my my goal was uh, stinky. I want to do ten thousand. I couldn't at any speed. I was flying from here to here. I don't have it. Get about it. But but <laughs> this was this was. We have a, a question from a, a view or uh, it depends. Uh, it depends. Uh, Spain, oh yeah, and Spain. Exactly. I just. Uh, Stay in the Lago last uh, 400 meters. And there is another question. What are the main challenges for you uh, when it comes to the 10,000? Oh, the main challenge is uh, Letterson Bad. Yes. She's going to take hard or she's going to, it doesn't matter. I'm sure she's going to go the last uh, 3K, the last 2K, or from Fast, beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, she's not going to uh, stay until uh, the, uh, last four, the, the last, last 400, 400 yeah. 200 meters. Not only me, because. Past. Uh, but I think she's the main challenge. It's gonna be really hard. This is the one. One more question. Wait, Nicola. In the in the build up of the the Tokyo Games, what is the importance of that race here in Monaco? In Monaco, like uh, you know, two thousand nineteen. I know I was in shape, but I did in Eugene a uh, fantastic uh, race. Uh, but um, I raced here a mile, and uh, I w we was uh, slow that the last uh, 800, and I pick up the last uh, uh, the last uh, 700 meters. I managed to run a world record. That make me like crazy confident. It doesn't matter how it's going to go. I would like uh, going to run fast. Even in Doha, when let somebody take the last 500, no, the last five laps so hard, and I was so far away. It was like, I, I, when I see now, I get scared of myself. I get nervous. I was thinking about Monaco. You know, I run mile like this. I can I don't have to, uh, I don't have to, uh, you know, rush myself. I don't have to go hard. You just uh, be patient. I can, I can catch. I was thinking about this. It's Monaco, even 5K. After 5K, it motivation me, motivate me so hard. That also was so slow, the last, uh, the first uh, 2K. I managed to get the world record. It's it just something amazing. It's just something give you confidence. Like it doesn't matter how it go, it's gonna go. I'm gonna run fast. Talking about confidence, sometimes you choose pace times which are quite high. Wh what what are the pace times tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow I will uh, gonna go 61, and uh, I will uh, see how far I can go. But uh, whether I go fast or whether I get tired or it doesn't matter. I will be happy about it because uh, I never tried this. It's my first time. I will be very happy about it okay. and go try this challenge myself also is one of uh, this is uh, what what told you the last training sessions is that uh, yeah yeah is it, right? it yeah. is uh, really I, I was working all the time speed and uh, it's, it's improving every time I'm really grateful alhamdulillah I'm very grateful une autre uh, une autre question no no more questions for uh, for tomorrow or for the Olympics? No, we have everything.
Thank you very much, and we wish you the best again. As you, when you come here, sometimes there is uh, always something special. So uh, <laughs> you know that since a long yes. time you ca you came. So uh, yes, yes, and you know the place so much. Yeah, I know. I know the people. I know the place, and uh, I'm there. Um, thank you so much. Thank yes. you, thank uh, you, Sifan. Good luck.
Ok, on revient. Celle-ci, le last, le dernier. Si tu veux, ouais, s'il y en a qui... J'attends deux minutes. Questions will be mainly in French, translated to English. Why? <laughs> y poco italiano. Ok, merci, merci d'être euh, de retour. Notre euh, dernier invité, le détenteur du record du monde du décathlon depuis 2018, 9126 points, c'était à Talence. Athlète de l'année 2018 pour les, le, les Européens. Vice-champion olympique à Rio en 2016, champion du monde à Londres en 2017, champion du monde indoor en salle en 2018 à Birmingham, à l'heptathlon. Et puis surtout aussi, pas oublier, champion du monde cadet en 2009, champion du monde junior en 2010, voilà, et vice-champion d'Europe à Toroun, deux fois, pardon, champion d'Europe euh, indoor, c'était à Toroun, donc cet hiver, la deuxième fois, c'était cet hiver. Il est avec nous, voici Kevin Mayer. Donc, je te pose des questions en français, tu réponds, et je traduis en anglais pour nos amis euh, qui sont là, et les questions seront soit posées en anglais, soit posées en français. Kevin, tout d'abord, comment se passe ta saison de, depuis euh, on a quitté un petit peu euh, l'indoor l'hiver Qu quel point tu peux nous faire avant d'arriver justement ici sur ce, sur ce meeting de, de Monaco alors euh, tout simplement je peux faire aucun point puisque j'ai pas encore commencé la compétition il euh, y avait des priorités à faire euh, j'ai passé mon hiver à m'entraîner énormément et à faire beaucoup de compétitions cet été c'était le choix entre aller dans un pays pour euh, s'acclimater à la chaleur ou euh, faire des compétitions on a choisi d'aller s'acclimater euh, les compétitions c'est bien pour se mettre en confiance etc mais j'ai décidé de me faire confiance malgré le, le manque de compétition et quand même venir me faire plaisir ici à, à Monaco un meeting quand même assez fabuleux que, où j'ai la chance d'être invité chaque année donc ça c'est le petit plaisir avant les jeux So for the, the beginning of the season I start my season here we choose not to make competition this year just to be training it was uh, a real choice with uh, my coaches we wanted to uh, to train hardly to uh, also make myself confident with that uh, way of uh, preparing the the olympic games and uh, coming here to monaco this is a fabulous uh, meeting i'm I've, i'm lucky to be invited uh, every year and it's uh, that's why i came here for uh, to, for this uh, this first competition ce sera sur le sur longueur 
il t'arrivait parfois de, de pouvoir aussi faire un, un triathlon. Euh, et là, tu veux démarrer sur, sur la longueur. Pourquoi Ça a été euh, un choix ou c'était l'invitation qui était faite comme ça euh, Ils m'ont proposé le 100 longueur, ça tombait bien parce que c'est, je pense, l'épreuve que j'ai le plus travaillé cette année, le plus changé et peut-être celle où j'ai le moins de repères euh, sur ma course d'élan complète. Donc c'est bien d'avoir une répétition avant les Jeux, les autres épreuves, c'est vrai que j'ai pas autant changé techniquement et je me sens beaucoup plus euh, à l'aise. I change uh, a lot of things on, on, in long jump. Maybe this is the event where I change uh, the most uh, things and uh, that's why I wanted to, to check also. That's why I accepted the invitation uh, and I came uh, to this. On the others, on the others uh, I didn't change so much, so uh, I'm more confident on others, uh, but I wanted to, to check on this one. Qu'est-ce qui a changé justement sur uh, ta préparation et quelle est, qu est, qu est la forme de saut que tu vas, tu vas utiliser tout simplement, euh, je me blessais beaucoup euh, au sang longueur et au sang hauteur, donc on a pas mal changé la manière d'impulser, euh, qui, qui permettrait de me protéger de la, ouais. la blessure, mais aussi d'être plus efficace, donc euh, ça peut repartir à zéro, donc... Euh je sais, je sais que j'ai progressé, mais euh, à 100%, je ne sais pas encore si j'arrive à, à le mettre en place. Et c'est vrai qu'une petite répétition avant les Jeux peut faire la différence au jeu. It's, it's a great uh, repetition for me uh, because re good rehearsal here to, to be here in Monaco. Why? Because I've been changing technique to avoid injuries on high jump and long jump. And uh, this may avoid me from, uh, from being, uh, being uh, injured in, uh, in long jump. So I want to test. I know I've uh, made progress. I know I improved. Uh, but uh, I want to, to be sure. And that's why I come here to test myself on this, uh, on this event. Tu disais, toutes les autres épreuves ont bien fonctionné à l'entraînement, tout ce que tu as préparé pour l'instant. Tu es sur le carnet de marche un petit peu que vous avez fait avec, euh, avec l'entraîneur. Vous, euh, vous êtes dans les clous Oui, on est, on est dans les clous. Euh, L'attente avant les JO est très très longue. Euh, 4 ans, c'est déjà très long. 5 ans, ça l'est encore plus. Euh, J'ai qu'une hâte, c'est d'être sur la piste. Maintenant, c'est que de l'impatience. Donc, euh, on essaie de... Comment dire Faire passer le temps sans, sans trop s'entraîner, sans trop vouloir se rassurer en laissant monter le jus plutôt en se reposant plus en faisant un peu de prépa physique et toujours un peu de marque dans, dans chacune des épreuves mais c'est vrai qu'il y a une confiance dans, dans les épreuves que j'avais pas les années d'avant qui me permet d'aborder les jeux avec euh, plus de confiance et de comment dire plus serein après euh, je dis pas non plus que je vais, je vais gagner pour sûr vu les résultats que mes, mes confrères des Cataloniens ont fait mais on va dire que personnellement je me, je me sens bien à l'approche des jeux I feel, I feel good. I uh, made myself more confident towards all the, the events. Uh, I know we've been preparing well. We do more qualities than, uh, than quantities. We do a lot of uh, also physical preparation sometimes. But uh, I, I let myself on, on some event with, with what we've been working on. So I feel confident for that towards the, the games. I don't say I'm going to, to win the games. I'm just saying that because I see my opponents. My opponents are are really good so far, so uh, I'm, I'm more confident towards the preparation is long. Four years is long, five years is lo longer than that. So we took, we took the, the way to, to, to prepare it uh, th this way, so it's, uh, it's a bit uh, different, but uh, I feel confident to, to what we've been working on. Justement, on le disait, tes, tes, tes adversaires sont illustrés, on l'a vu avec Warner, encore une fois à, à Götzis. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose qui t'inquiète ou euh, ça fait partie de la logique des choses Non, bah, Damien Warner, on sait depuis des années qu'il a le potentiel de faire ce qu'il vient de faire. Euh, à chaque compétition, je m'attendais à ce qu'il fasse ça quand j'étais dans les starting blocks aux 100 mètres. Donc, euh, adversité ou pas adversité, je ne me suis jamais vu gagnant en me mettant dans les starting blocks. Donc, ça ne change pas grand-chose pour moi à la limite. Je donnerai mon maximum quoi qu'il arrive. Ça peut juste être un bonus parce que ça va me pousser à aller dépasser mes limites. No, no, I'm not worried uh, to what did uh, Damien Warner. I, I know that since a long time. We know Damien Warner. When, he, when he's on a, in a competition, we expect a lot from him. Uh, and well, he did it uh, at this time, so uh, this stage. So this is, this is normal. But uh, I'm not worried also of the concurrency, the, the, the opponents that we will have in, uh, in Tokyo. Uh, also motivates me to be more uh, focused on, uh, on this competition and this is uh, I think a good thing too. 
lorsqu'on parle de préparation du décathlonien, tu le disais, il faut peut-être, c'est ce que tu disais, plus de qualité, parce que c'est toujours quelque chose qui peut être, euh, effectivement, on peut en faire trop parfois, vu, vu le, le nombre d'épreuves qu'il peut y avoir. C'est le problème du décathlon, c'est-à-dire que une vie ne suffirait pas à maîtriser les 10, les 10 épreuves, et si on veut les travailler autant qu'un spécialiste, on va forcément se blesser. Donc il faut savoir prendre des raccourcis, il faut savoir euh, trouver le meilleur moyen de les travailler et arriver le plus possible à une technique à peu près stable pour avoir un décathlon qui soit plus serein, même si on n'est jamais à l'abri du zéro. A life won't be enough to work on all the, the events. Uh, if you want to, to prepare all the events like a normal specialist on this event, it won't be possible. It not be possible. So we try to make a short way and to, uh, and to focus on the right technique in e on each event. If we do so, I mean, uh, we can also improve uh, uh, on, on each one, but uh, not, not like, a, like an, at that time, like a specialist, but this is something uh, we have to take uh, in account to prog progress and, to, uh, and to, to go to your goal. On va laisser être cuisiné par nos amis euh, journalistes qui vont te poser à leur tour des, des, des questions. Qui est-ce qui veut commencer Who wants to start Salut Kevin. Euh, J'ai vu l'autre jour que tu disais sur les, les réseaux sociaux après les, le week-end où il y a eu d'un côté les Trials US et de l'autre les Championnats de France qui avaient peut-être des enseignements à tirer d'un pays vers l'autre. J'ai vu que ça avait euh, généré pas mal de, de discussions. Tu, tu veux repréciser un peu le, les choses peut-être Ouais, je précisais, hein. je parlais pas du fait euh, que ce soit qualification sur un seul, une seule discipline, surtout un mois, avant, un, un mois et demi avant. Je parlais de prendre exemple sur les côtés positifs euh, de la manière de voir le sport aux, aux états unis Et en fait, je parlais tout simplement des résultats qu'ils avaient aux trials. S'ils avaient, avaient eu les... Pour moi, ce serait plus logique qu'ils aient ces résultats aux Jeux Olympiques. Mais eux les font un mois et demi avant. Et je pense que, surtout pour les décathloniens, c'est un peu court entre les JO. Mais ça montre quand même un niveau... Bon, je sais qu'il y a aussi la densité de population à regarder, etc. Mais je pense que même si on prend toute l'Europe, on n'assiste pas à ce qu'on a assisté aux trials. Et c'est là-dessus que je viens. Il y a un état d'esprit euh, dans le sport aux états unis qu'on n'a pas. Et... Euh de, de l'état d'esprit euh, universitaire et, et même avant à l'école. We're com making a comparison in between the French national championships and the trials, the US trials, just to is that we can inspire ourselves from the, uh, the spirit uh, that they have uh, in the States. Of course, the competitions, like especially in the decathlon, was high uh, because they make their competition before the, the Olympic Games and it's uh, also a short time to recover, but this is the way they, they see it. And uh, in terms of inspiration, it would be good to have this uh, spirit uh, that they have in uh, NCAA also uh, at the trials for us to have uh, this great concurrence in between, in between uh, uh, the, the athletes to make great performances. Une autre, une autre question euh, Salut Kevin, est-ce que ce meeting à Monaco sera ta seule compétition avant les Jeux Et sinon, bah, sur quelle autre épreuve tu t'aligneras Ce sera la seule compétition. Euh, le seul problème, c'est l'adversité la, aux 100 mètres et aux 110 mètres ouais, que j'irai chercher à Kobe avec mes confrères français au sprint et, au, et sur les haies. Donc, je ne suis pas bien inquiet là-dessus. Euh, c'est vrai que c'est rare que je fasse ça, mais il y avait des choix à faire et, euh, et je pense qu'on a fait les bons. Avant mon record du monde, en fait, j'ai fait un mois sans aucune compétition et ça a plutôt bien marché. Je sais que là, je suis un peu plus longtemps sans compétition, mais avec euh, l'expérience que j'ai eue, bah, en fait, j'ai fait un décathlon en décembre et deux mois après, j'ai fait un heptathlon en salle et il fallait quand même récupérer tout ça, surtout vu que je m'étais beaucoup entraîné aussi. Euh, je ressens pas le besoin de faire des compétitions pour être performant au JO. Après, bien sûr, on verra ce que ça donne. So I, I don't I don't feel that I need to do a lot of competition. This will be my only competition before Tokyo. So uh, I, I will train with a, with a specialist on 100 and 110 hurdles to have this uh, confrontation uh, in training. But uh, this happened before. Uh, 
before the world uh, record, I was one month without uh, competition. So uh, we try to see if we we have the same uh, same feeling for this uh, this one is a bit shorter even if i did work a lot uh, i did a decathlon in december and uh, a decathlon at the uh, european cha indoor championships last uh, last winter it took time to recover it took time for me to uh, to be in a, also in a, in a good shape for to prepare this uh, this olympic games this season and this is the choice we made De toute façon, ils n'auraient pas, pas eu le droit d'applaudir. Donc, euh, je dis pas que c'est mieux sans. Euh, on nous enlève une part euh, assez riche. Aujourd'hui, et surtout aux Jeux Olympiques, c'est parce que je vais arriver en forme et parce que c'est ma passion. Donc, euh, on me laisse l'opportunité de tous les temps. Donc, euh, je ne suis pas du genre à me plaindre, même si c'est sûr qu'on m'enlève un certain pourcentage de réjouissance à cet événement. Après, le plus gros, la plus grosse part de réjouissance à cet événement, moi, ça va être d'aller défoncer la piste dans des événements. J'ai la chance de faire du décathlon, d'être deux jours dans un stade olympique. Euh, je ouais, je sais pas, je suis peut-être très optimiste, mais franchement, j'en ai rien à faire aujourd'hui, du moins. Euh, je j'ai vécu ça à Torun en fait, je sais ce que ça va être. Je sais que j'ai découvert que je pouvais appeler FaceTime toutes les heures euh, ma famille pendant le championnat. Et limite, je leur parle plus quand ils ne sont pas là que quand ils sont là. Donc, euh, on trouve toujours des, des solutions pour que ce soit mieux. Talking about uh, having no crowd, no public in, uh, in Tokyo. Well, uh, anyway, they wouldn't be allowed to applause or to, uh, to shout. Uh, but uh, to, be, uh, to be honest... Uh, We do that sport for for something special and also to to communicate sometimes. But I'd, I, I, it's not it's not a problem to to compete uh, like this with uh, with no crowd. I, I'm lucky to do my passion, and uh, that's more important. Also, uh, I I learned from uh, Torun last winter that we could do uh, this competition without crowd. I did a uh, FaceTime with my friends and my family uh, after each event. Um, I realized that I spoke more to them this way than if they were on the, in, the, in the stands. Une autre question? Je voudrais savoir ce que tu as retenu finalement de ce stage à la chaleur. Quoi. Quelle était l'idée principale C'était de faire des exercices très durs dans la chaleur ou au contraire, de, juste une question de passer du temps C'était quoi l'idée principale C'était de s'entraîner normalement tout simplement euh, et de voir mes réactions à la chaleur. On s'est rendu compte qu'en fait, euh, moi, je trouvais ça limite plus agréable que s'il n'y avait pas d'humidité. Euh, on était à Dubaï, il faisait plus chaud que ce qu'il va faire à Tokyo. Peut-être avec un peu moins d'humidité, mais il y en avait beaucoup, beaucoup le matin. On était entre 35 et 45 donc, euh, degrés. Donc, euh, j'ai vraiment apprécié ce stage parce qu'au début, on y allait en se disant, on va voir comment ça va réagir. Limite, on se demandait si ça allait mal réagir. Et au contraire, c'était un peu comme, euh, comme à Doha, quand j'aimais bien m'échauffer dehors, en fait. Euh, c'est sûr que le plus gros problème, je pense, de cette chaleur, c'est vraiment euh, les demi-fondeurs, les triathlètes les marcheurs, ceux qui font du vélo, enfin toutes les longues distances, la résistance. Mais étant donné que nous, notre 400 mètres et notre 1500 mètres sera à 22 heures à chaque fois, il n'y aura pas ce problème de, de, de très grosse chaleur. Et puis c'est qu'un 1500 mètres entre, entre, entre guillemets. Ce n'est pas, pas un marathon, ce n'est pas un triathlon qui dure euh, longtemps en plein après-midi. Donc euh, on, se, on, on voulait être sûr et on est, on est rassuré. I did a training camp in Dubai on a high uh, uh, temperature conditions. Uh, was was really good. I did appreciate a lot to uh, to work in these conditions. It was more humidity in the morning than uh, than uh, during the day. So uh, the morning was more like uh, the conditions we will have in Tokyo. But I d I did work uh, good in these conditions. So I was quite happy the the way we did it. Uh, I been warming up in Doha outside uh, I liked also the, the, the this feeling uh, so uh, we, w we will uh, uh, expect something from uh, from that uh, to 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 work on uh, in Tokyo and in Tokyo 
this will affect more the middle distance and long distance runners than us. We have 400 and 1500 and the 1500s. Uh, anyway, these two events will be late uh, at 10 uh, p.m. So uh, I don't think we will ha be in trouble uh, towards towards this. So you know, I think it, it was uh, everything was positive doing this. Une autre une autre question, oui. Marie Tsebat pour Elle Monaco. Et, euh, quel est l'esprit meilleur pour euh, un, un vise à la bien sûr aux Jeux Olympiques Quel est l'esprit mental, on peut dire, euh, en préparation à cette épreuve qui est des, haut, des très hauts niveaux Donc, à côté des bien sûr des entraînements physiques. Je pense que il n'y a pas d'entraînement mental. Enfin, personnellement, je ne fais pas de préparation mentale pour préparer les Jeux Olympiques. Je me sers surtout de mes expériences. J'ai participé deux fois aux Jeux Olympiques déjà. La première fois, c'était la catastrophe. La deuxième fois, c'était assez cool. Donc, on va dire que toutes mes expériences passées vont me servir maintenant. Je... C'est toujours le même niveau de pression, voire plus. Mais c'est un niveau de pression que j'accepte je... de plus en plus et que j'assume de plus en plus. Donc, on va dire qu'à l'approche de... de ces JO, qui est le plus gros objectif de notre vie en tant qu'athlète, euh, je me suis jamais senti aussi, aussi serein et, et c'est plutôt agréable. Je sais que ça n'a pas forcément influé sur le résultat des JO, mais c'est plus facile à vivre quand on accepte sa pression plutôt que quand on la subit. There is no uh, mental. Uh, I'm not making a mental preparation for the Olympic Games. Especially, uh, we do we do work on that since uh, since the beginning. I'd Looking to my experience, uh, I, I did uh, two Olympic Games. Uh, the first one were big catastrophe, so the second wa was pretty cool to uh, uh, to perform in there. So uh, I use this to, to towards what we, what will be uh, at the, at the in Tokyo, and uh, we I can I, I think I can handle uh, this uh, this the, the the way we did it before and. Uh, et l'expérience uh, compte beaucoup. Une autre, une autre question Merci. Euh, salut Kevin. Euh, les Jeux Olympiques, c'est euh, une vitrine formidable, non seulement pour la clé, mais pour tous les sports. Je pense que ce n'est pas un secret que tu es un passionné de, de sport en général. Et puis euh, après Tokyo, bien sûr, il y a, y a Paris 2024. Est-ce qu'il y a des équipes françaises, je crois les, les volleyeurs, les handballeurs, il y a le basket aussi, non Les basketteurs, ouais. les judokas, que entre Tokyo et, et Paris, à vous pour les générations à venir, cette aventure du sport Non, oui. Euh... Je suis un grand passionné de sport en général. C'est sûr que je ne me suis pas mis au décalage. Euh, parmi les volleyeurs, parmi les handballeurs. Euh, par, par ce qu'ils font. Et euh, c'est vrai que je serai à fond derrière eux. Je n'aime pas donner de pronostics. Euh, je préfère me laisser euh, comment dire, euh, surprendre. Comme quand euh, l'équipe de France a battu les USA au championnat du monde de basket il n'y a pas longtemps. Enfin en 2019, mais bon, le sport a connu une pause après. Donc, euh, je ne donnerai pas de pronostic, mais c'est sûr que je vais suivre tout le monde, pour les judokas, les, les kayakistes, les gymnastes, enfin... C'est... C'est un... Honnêtement, j'aimerais bien que le décathlon soit avant ou après les Jeux, parce que j'adore passer mon temps devant la télé, je préfère être spectateur qu'acteur qu pendant les Jeux. <rire> Uh, talking about other sports, yeah, I do support uh, a, a lot of sports. I, I know a lot of uh, uh, volleyball players, uh, basketball players, handball uh, players. Uh, it's something uh, I, I follow, but uh, don't count on me to give you any pronostics, any uh, any uh, expectation on them. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, li I don't like to do this. Uh, I will, I will follow. I'm a, a big follower from a lot of sports. I would love that the decathlon will be before or after the games like this. I will be in front of my TV watching them. Uh, this is something I, I really uh, look forward to. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will, uh, will be behind them. Une autre, une autre question On te la pose. Uh, tu auras 32 ans en 2024. Uh, C'est dans ta tête 
un peu ces, ces Jeux à Paris Bien sûr, bien sûr. Je, je le dis depuis longtemps, hein, maintenant il faut que ça sorte en compétition. Euh, à l'entraînement, je continue à progresser. Et euh, j'ai la chance d'avoir le même préparateur physique que Maïda Robert Michon qui progresse encore à 42 ans. Donc euh, je m'éclate dans ce que je fais. Mes blessures m'empêchent de moins en moins de m'éclater dedans. Donc euh, je, je devrais peut-être le garder pour moi, mais j'ai n'ai jamais sauté en hauteur autant cette année depuis à peu près 5 ans. Et, et sans douleur, et c'est assez exceptionnel, c'est un plaisir énorme. Et je ne me vois pas arrêter après ces jeux-là, c'est sûr, après 2024 non plus. Quoi. Enfin, tout simplement, je, je kiffe ma vie, et tant que je peux la pratiquer comme ça, je le ferai. Et franchement, si je peux aller à Los Angeles 2028, et... bon, je sais que j'aurai 40 ans en, en 2032, mais... Et 2028, ce sera déjà pas mal. <laughs> 38 en, en 2028. Uh, talking about the future, uh, well, I don't see myself stopping. Uh, I, 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 I'm improving. I'm improving now. Uh, I feel like uh, I'm uh, improving a lot of, lot of events. I shouldn't say it, but uh, I, n I never jumped that much in high jump in training without pain. Without pain. I feel, uh, I feel I'm... Uh, feeling good uh, in training so so far uh, of course i'm uh, thinking about uh, the, the future Melina robert michon is uh, 41 42 42 years old so she'll do uh, fifth olympics and i'm uh, i'm seeing uh, all these great, great athletes so yeah well i'm thinking of course paris 2024 it's not really long but i'm also feel, uh, thinking about los angeles 2028 And in 2032, I will, I'll be only 40, 41, so 42 years old. So, so far, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I like my, uh, my event. I like what I'm doing. Ah, C'est clair. Là. Il a été très clair. Une autre question? No more questions? Plus de questions? On est, on est clair pour cette euh, compétition. Merci, Kevin. Merci à vous. Bonne chance. Et puis, euh, on se retrouve, bien entendu, après ce son longueur. Merci.